Hello everybody, welcome back to Trash Comps. This is going to be a, another Across the Obelisk video on Madness 16. Today we're going to be doing an all warriors team again. Actually, I did pre-record the video in which we're doing, so it'll be sped up significantly because <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of stuff in Across the Obelisk that takes a lot of time and uh, honestly I don't think it's too worth sitting over <laughs> all that said. It's still a two hour video, so... We'll be going through that. Um, the idea here was I wanted to make a team where Ma Magnus and Yogurt could be the carries. Um, I actually tried out a few other team compositions before this, and I decided to go with All Warriors because it just felt like it was going to work pretty well. Um, we have that other All Warriors video. Um, All Warriors just feels like the strongest uh, group. And they did make two more warriors, which I'm excited to try out soon. Um, I recorded this video before that happened, though. Uh, I didn't realize they're going to be doing a DLC so soon, so I wanted to get this out here. Anyways, without much further ado, uh, let's look at our perks. So for Magnus, uh, I'm going to make sure he has the slow perks. He's going to go pretty fast. Um, full energy, full <laughs> damage carry. He has some bleed on here, just in case that was going to be relevant. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, all our warriors have vulnerability. Uh, we even have the vulnerable enemies reducing the slashing, piercing, blunt resistances by more um, for 8% in lieu of other damage. Um, and then, yeah, maximum vulnerable charges increased by one, and charges Magnus applied is going to be more. We have powerful and uh, the draw more. And that's about it. So yeah, this was before the powerful and draw more perk changed. Excited to see how that affects when Madness 16 runs, and by excited I mean worried. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully it doesn't make things too much more difficult, but we'll see. Um, Yogurt, I am planning to go the full carry route, so I wanted to make sure he had as much HP as possible. We have speed, we have energy, um, again more physical damage, I'm planning to get carnages on both, we have the increased sharp because they're going to be mostly sharpening themselves, and more bleed, just because I figure I'm going to be stopping by Yogurt's camp, picking up the cleaver, and uh, using bleed for at least some time, um, maybe even more if we get the uh, awesome super straw hat build. Um, I don't know why I have this extra fortify, that's actually just a misplaced perk. <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, standard, more powerful, uh, more draw. So, cool. Uh, Bree, here's the perks. We're going with the full speed, Bree is going to be responsible for speeding up the whole team. Ideally, we get faster than the clones at the end of the game, but also just stay faster than the majority of uh, enemies for the entirety of the run. Um, she's also going to be going full block and full fortify, uh, especially the fortify not being purged. I actually didn't need this really, but I don't know. I wanted to have something. Um, I <laughs> would take this if this was like a year ago, but unfortunately they nerfed this into the ground and this is a really bad perk. So <laughs> never take this. <laughs> um, uh, sharp on, does not lose charges, so she's going to be one making sure that we all keep our sharp. Uh, she does apply powerful to the rest of the team, so we'll have the powerful perk. And uh, she does apply vitality as well, so I figured I might as well pick up that for a little extra healing, because we won't have much on this run outside of Bree. And finally, we have Heiner. Heiner is super slow. Uh, I do have one investment in speed, actually, though, just because there are certain times where he'll be able to outspeed slow enemies. Um, and I... Honestly, it was that, or like 75 more shards, and I didn't need the shards, so here we go. Uh, he's going to be super tanky boy, missing out on only the max level of health. He's also going to have the full block, and he's going to have fortify uh, stacks chart, uh, fortifies stacking higher. Um, because he's so slow, I also have the reinforce at the start of turn, so that if he does end up taking damage through his block, which he might, uh, it'll hopefully be physical, and he won't take too much more on top of that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all the perks. We have the extra draw as well, and let's get going and see how this was. Like I said, the footage is going to be sped up, so sorry if <laughs> there's a little bit of uh, sound problems on the video. And in just a second, I'm going to remember where I put this. Here we go. And what about the media capture? Perfect. Alrighty. So here we go, as you can see on our media capture, uh, we have the town. 
Uh, I actually didn't have preset builds for this. I hadn't been really testing this run much. I tested it once before and I got pretty far, but I I made a really goofy goober where I sold Yoger's um, first enchantment card that he gets, where he gets to steal auras. Uh, I think in like the second act shop somehow. I'm not sure when or how I made that mistake. I only noticed uh, at the very end and it made me really sad to the point where I kind of just threw the run because I didn't want to win with a no rob uh, yoger. So instead you can see the changes I'm making here. Um, feel free to slow down the video if you want to see the full decks, it's going to be a bit. Um, just making sure Magnus and yoger have a bit of damage. I really want uh, Bree and Heiner to tank though. Uh, I chose the middle route here because I was thinking maybe getting the sheep would be useful. Um, and I also bought the wolf, as you can see, because I'm planning to go by Yogur's camp and get the super wolf. So, play here is pretty simple. Um, ideally, we're going to be sharpening up Yogur and or Magnus, depending on who I feel like is doing better. Magnus has more zero-cost cards, uh, but Yogur has more repeat cards, so it's honestly like... It was kind of hard for me to tell the entire time who I should be sharpening, so this run goes more in the spirit of actual duo carry. Um, unlike my Grookly Sylvie run, which I didn't feel like w was a super duo carry that much. Uh, and again, I am focusing on making sure that we just don't die with the block from Heiner and Bree. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, uh, Heiner does take a lot of damage, but we do have ways to get his block right back up, um, even while he's taunting. Uh, no ways to remove bleed or burn or any of that, so statuses are really effective against the warrior group. And we won't get a really good heal till Breeze level 4, uh, but we do have Yogur's meat, and his meat is actually fairly effective. Uh, it's a lot more than I would expect, and honestly, it's it's... Like, it's better than some of the other healer passives in some ways, if you don't go, like, full-on devoted to healing, um, especially with Decadence on. Like, the Decadence just doesn't hit Vitality as hard as I feel like it hits the healing, because the healing it reduces by a flat amount, so. Whereas it basically only reduces Vitality health by half, so not too bad overall. Um, first fight, pretty easy. Heiner didn't take too much damage. Uh, sweeping strikes on the wrong people. Uh, Intimidate, I'm looking at for Yogur. I might want it. I do want a flanking strike, but I want it upgraded. So I, I did have that extra rage on Magnus just in case I somehow was able to go rage. Not really expecting to this run though. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, fortunately here, the other nice thing about trying to get Betty and do the sheep build is that it's a easy fight uh, to just get experience off of because it, there's no champion of this fight. And it does allow us to go up in towards the hatch as well, which is something I want to do so that we can be full-on level 2 by the time... Uh, well, probably by the time we get to the hatch boss even, which is something that's very nice for any team to do. <clears throat> and yeah, the bleed stacks from Yogur is helping out a little bit. And the sheep are dying. I feel a little bit bad that I can't kill them round 1, but that's just not <laughs> this type of team. As for uh, the good parts about this all-warrior team, is we do have a, just a ton of free draw. I gave everybody the Inspire cards because for now even our damage carries had just a lot of useless cards in deck, so <laughs> replacing the useless cards with Helping Hands felt better to me because Helping Hands are really cheap and gave other people draw. But yeah, you can see right there we're getting actually decently high damage, like the 46 uh, damage on Yogur, with a very little amount of sharp actually. And I'm able to pick up another Bladestorm on Magnus, and a already upgraded zero cost repair armor, one of my favorite block cards in the game. So I was actually really happy to see that. <coughs> but yeah, for the most part I am giving the draw to Magnus. One, because he's going to go directly after me, and he'll be able to draw more other Inspire cards as well. Um, and two, because he just has more zero-cost cards in his deck, so the draws go a bit further with him. He's usually able to play all his cards and spend all his energy. Unlike Yogur, who is always able to spend all his energy, uh, but not always able to play all his cards. Uh, right there, I opted to save an energy for next turn, though. And that's kind of how the flow of these fights go with this team, is you just 
plan on killing round two or three um, for some of the grindier fights or tougher matchups. It's definitely like a five or six. But the nice part about being warriors is you have enough block and the, the statuses don't build up too fast that you can go to round five or six without dying and losing the run. Unlike some of the other Alpha Strike teams. So it's a little bit more of that slow grind. And hopefully I can make my build more optimal to go uh, super damaging later. <coughs> Yeah, you can see a lot of thought goes into all these moves. This is played at by about uh, three times speed as well. So, <laughs> you can see why I might speed it up. Uh, the premium meats, when we do get them, they are super good for raising these stats. Like, if I was going to make a more optimal build, I think the yogurt uh, just meat build is better. Like, it is better at support, it is better at getting damage out of... Um, Magnus, but it, you know, it, there's something fun about having his uh, super perk at level 3, which I'll go into more detail later. For now, the war paints are keeping us going, getting our damage really up there. Um, an upgraded helping hand is something I always like to see in the early game because I want to take one of those uh, at some point, and they're great for removing shackles. Bree is a skill champion, so a helping hand there. Figure I might as well have three. Um, an upgraded sweeping strike. I honestly, I just took that so that I could get rid of my non-upgraded sweeping strikes <laughs> and not feel bad about it. Um, and yeah, for the farmer, I was like, huh, what do I want to do? I guess I'll ask about the legendary sheep. <laughs> so we'll hopefully be able to do that a little bit later and that'll get us even more, uh, money and a golden sheep hide, which surely will come into use. Uh, I have actually never unlocked that item. I do know how to get it. I just... <laughs> I've never, I've never had a run where I felt like I wanted it, so this might have been a run where it was okay, but I, I wanted to do something else on the fourth act instead. And again, we get these easy pig fights. It's weird not having rope going into this fight and also knowing that I'm not going to be able to get like the main benefit of coming down here in the <laughs> grant an energy, grant too powerful card uh, that is always down here. Um, and you can get that in every hero's deck if you have the pig to sacrifice the hole. Uh, but not this time. So instead, I want to just go get the other uh, energy card that I believe removes fire or gives you some uh, heat resistance. Um, and, of course, the super good one extra energy, which when that comes up, it is very nice. Uh, having one extra energy total in your deck is certainly something to think about when you're making decks because... Uh, if you like calculate out how much energy you expect to have each turn and how many cards you're playing every turn, like if you're going through seven or eight cards each turn, that means you're going to have two turns before you cycle through your deck, and you know which cards get removed or which stay, and you know that you're going to have three energy at the later rounds, because um, rounds one and two you have four energy. So having that extra nine energy between those two, split between those two rounds uh, can be very useful. It certainly allows you to build... Uh, or play more cost-heavy stuff in your decks. As for Magnus, I was debating another Bladestorm, but it's really not that good. So, gems here are what we're going to be going with, and the Imp Statue, because we don't have the Pig, is where I'm going to be heading. Um, this is a really risky uh, mortal strike, but I'm feeling fairly confident in the run. Heiner's a bit damaged, um, but this buff is no joke. Like, it can get out of control, and I know we're a bit more of a grindy team, so this did worry me a bit. This is certainly a part where I felt like I could lose the run, so I, I, I took it as seriously as I could. I think the draw ended up being pretty good. Um, also, I picked up an extra fast strike on Magnus there because I plan on getting more zero-cost fast strikes. I don't know that I actually should have, to be honest, but... Eh. It felt like it was a good idea at the time. And I'm upping the Sharpen because I know I'm going to need to scale over time with Yogur and have a bit more going for me in order to actually kill them because the Farmer can heal for quite a bit. But I feel like if I could at least get rid of the Wolf, we'll be in relatively good shape. However, we do also have a lot of block, which is nice. Uh, Magnus fortunately does go first. Uh, he gets that Wolf Howl off. We have the full Vulnerable on the Wolf and we slow the entire team which allows Bree to go next, uh, which is very fortunate. Um, that wolf could have totally gone first this turn, I believe, as well, if he, I hadn't slowed him, so it was a very nice happenstance. Um, and you can see that uh, Yogur's starting card is actually doing quite a bit of damage with the powerful, um, being up to 80%. 
Um, the point one of your health into powerful into some sharp, just that card is very good, and you get a free meat out of it no matter what happens, so it's a f free heal in a way as well. Uh, Yogur has a very good starting card and deck. Uh, Yogur's honestly just, he's one of the better characters in the game at this point, I think. Um, despite all that, I am taking quite a bit of damage. The uh, farmer's really amping up his moves. Um, but I got a premium meat, fortunately, so I'm going to have even more damage. And I think I can kill him close to this point. Yeah. Yeah, more than enough. And I get a really big mortal strike out of this, which is great, because uh, that's how I wanted Magnus to carry. Magnus is... He gets a card at level 2 that allows him to have a follow-up attack where the next card, or he plays an attack, and then hit one of his attacks in hand gets reduced by 5. Um, so you really want to have high cost attacks in hand. Mortal Strike fit the bill perfectly, plus I know Mortal Strike is super good against Yogur and some of the other uh, uh, bosses. This here is actually pretty funny. I have never fought the Imp statue before. I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, because I've never, like, failed this challenge. I think I've always had, like, a wizard or sorcerer when I was going this route, and I rarely go this route because I normally go for the sacrifice the pig anyways if I am going up here. So, <laughs> yeah, first time for everything. Still seeing new things in this game that have been here since I've started playing. It's just kind of funny. Uh, still, I was like, eh, this doesn't seem too bad. Like, it's got decent resistances, but we're through the enemies right now, so, like, hopefully we can crack this guy open really quick. But then I noticed that he summoned an enemy, and it's super fast straight away, and I was like, oh, this is probably his gimmick. He's going to be summoning more and more enemies uh, throughout the entirety of the fight, which should be okay. I should have enough damage to deal with it, but I am a little bit worried at this point, because I am really good at hitting the front enemy a lot, and really bad at hitting the uh, more in-back enemies. Like you can see there, I couldn't quite finish him off, and he's summoning another enemy, and now he's getting more block, and going to have more block next turn. And I just can't hit him. Uh, so, I was starting to get a little bit worried that I would get outscaled, especially if some of these imps wanted to like blow up <laughs> and do a massive amount of fire damage to me. I was pretty worried about that. Uh, but, if I could just get a attack that hits the back line, I'll be okay. <laughs> Which I did, but it was unfortunately Mortal Strike and I didn't have enough to play it. And Magnus's Bladestorm that he picked up is the wrong one. Uh, so, definitely a little bit rough. I'm kind of like hoping that these Rampages hit the right target. Uh, but I did get the Bladestorm instead, so I'm able to do that. Um, Dispel, or Shake It Off is always good for a tank that you expect to have a lot of statuses on them. Heiner fit that bill perfectly. Um, it's a little bit odd because it's not block. Oh, and here's where Magnus gets follow-up because he didn't break his legs jumping into the hatch unlike everybody else. <laughs> everybody else has quite a few bad cards in their deck now because of that imp statue failure. So I was a little bit nervous going into the next fight too because I'm my decks are looking pretty bad at this point. So... Despite that, I'm like, eh, I'll take the gold instead of any slight advantage items can give me. Um, we're going with Pillage on Yogur and the Block skill card on Bree. Bree's skill card is honestly kind of insane. Uh, for every skill you play, you draw and give 15 block to the entire team. Um, which is just, like, it's incredible. No enemies are getting through that on the first turn outside of the very late, late game enemies. And at that point, hopefully, you're, you have more block any, at, <clears throat> from Heiner. So, yeah. Uh, but like I said, normally you want to kill these um, uh, summoners in the back. However, I decided I, I was going to actually leave them alive because I figured they're going to be trying to summon imps, and I didn't know which one because I couldn't see. And it turns out that one was trying to summon an imp. And that one was trying to summon an imp. <laughs> I, I double checked by looking at both their cards. It's just pretty funny. Because I was just like, oh, that's, uh, that's a lot of imp summoning there. <laughs> but yeah, this Mortal Strike is doing tons of damage. So, very happy I picked that up. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so useful in the early game. I was more going to use it as a tech card. But yeah, I... I'm really happy about having a purple mortal strike really early on. Like a lot of times Magnus doesn't get a good card 
until quite a bit later. Um, that fits with his build anyway. So, yeah, there's the Rob Two Auras card. That card... <sighs> Uh, Yogurt is just very fun. <laughs> I'm excited to see what the new characters can do too. But Yogurt just does so much. Like, stealing auras from an enemy is so very unique and can be extremely powerful because enemies can scale up pretty fast. Like, you can stop bosses from outscaling you just by taking everything they've had, which is a mechanic that sometimes they've had to do to you, where they just stop all your scaling. So it feels good to do it right back. That purple intimidate is certainly tempting. Um, that's three extra mark and a little bit more vulnerable, but I didn't need it, so I opt not to take it. Uh, and here I opt to fight Bellafor. I'm at full health. I was pretty sure I could manage. <laughs> like, it's a little bit hard because I can only hit the front and he also summons imps, and some of his imps blow up and do a ton of damage. Um, here I... Decided to go for Mortal Strike. It doesn't do quite as much damage as I, as I would like because I wasn't really full powerful. Um, and he wasn't as vulnerable as I could make him because I'm trying to get him up to 7 vulnerable every time. It reduces the resistances by a lot, ups the damage by like 50 to 70% quite often. Uh, but I'm hoping they have some useful auras to take. I do save uh, the aura card because I want to reduce the cost of other cards permanently as they cycle through my deck by one, um, which is the other thing that Yogurt's Rob does. Uh, whenever you play an attack, you get that uh, sweet, sweet, powerful vitality and highest card reduced by one throughout the rest of the fight. So very, very good, uh, especially for long, grindy fights. I know I have the attack card now, so I'm going to make Butchering cheaper. Uh, I have these fast strikes to help enable that a little bit better. I can steal this Imp's Powerful, go up to my max 10. And I wanted to make Butchering cheaper, but I didn't really have a way to guarantee that. So unfortunately, I just have to opt with Rampage and Butchering, which actually ends up being better. <laughs> uh, so silly me. I didn't realize I was going to be doing so much damage that I could kill the Imp. Because um, I wanted to focus more on the back guy, because if we kill him, we end the fight. And yeah, so far the fire seems under control. I have 141 block on Heiner, so he's even getting in there with 61 damage of his own. I have follow-up, but I'm not able to make anything super meaningful cheaper. Still, that extra damage will be enough to finish off the fight. And yeah, we come out of here pretty much unscathed. So, as you can see, next turn and this turn, like if we had let him go, we would have taken a ton of damage. But we're just barely fast enough to get through. Um, Blood Rage is a hard card for me, because it's very good, but it is damaging, and self-damaging isn't quite what I want to do when I'm blocking so often. And then again, I'm tanky enough to risk it, and I don't know if I'll need energy on Bree. Usually I don't, but I sometimes want it for the early game, and to play the uh, Entrench card, which costs 5 energy. Shield Charge is another one I'm not sure of, but I was noticing Yogurt had a lot of block left over from Bree and Heiner, and Shield Charge can be a very effective damage uh attack if you can maintain like 150 200 block at the start of your turn so we'll have to see how well that comes into play uh take a pebble throw on magnus just for a little extra damage it's always nice to have even though he's not doing too much it's not going to be as useful as it is on sylvie but it's still pretty good um i don't often fight the golden sheep either so i wasn't sure what to expect here but honestly as a champion it's probably easier to fight than most other champions because it doesn't get like extra cards so this is again just an easier fight um another way to make sure i'm a little bit more ahead by getting more rewards the experience unfortunately that you get from these fights is not that high uh you get uh diminished experience if you've already leveled up in an act uh by like i, I want to say like i don't know 90% so you get like a tenth of the experience maybe that you would normally get from each fight which can still add up so like by the time you get into the next act you might level up one fight faster than you would otherwise so sometimes it's worth doing I haven't done the math to figure out like where that'll matter or like what fights it'll matter before um but I am planning to go to the lava route, so if I could level up before the first fight after the Colosseum, or if I could level up basically right after the Colosseum fights, I'd be very happy. 
Um, that's sort of my idea with taking on as many fights as possible, as well as just having more access to more card rewards. It's never really a bad idea if you want to make sure your rung has longevity. Uh, but so far you can see this uh, sheep is going down, though all that bleed that the sheeps do is uh, getting to Heiner. He's looking a little worse for wear, despite being fully decked out, and Modal Strike definitely finishes the job. Um, defense, not going to be too good. Sweeping Strike, I was debating between it, but then I realized that it's honestly not that good, and I'd rather just have Rampage for single target damage. So, yeah. <laughs> I opt not to go for it. I think about the soldier training event, and then I decide not to do it. Going down here doesn't really affect my path in any way. You still get the same two options. And no point in healing, really. It would just be Heiner. Might as well try to get extra shards and gold, which I did. So we actually have a, quite a lot of shards and gold um, for this point in the act. I was able to take on uh, enough fights to where I feel like I was doing, or I was getting well rewarded. Um, here is not a fight since we already have Yogurt, no boss fight. All the other people could get Yogurt's special starting card, which is good, but it's definitely not as good as potentially getting items and stuff. Um, which I don't know if you get anyways, but I didn't want to test it out this run. <laughs> like, it, it's fully possible that I could have given Magnus the super meat card and that would have been great, but eh. That's for future me to test out. Uh, Yogurt picking up Yogurt's Cleaver, Magnus picking up Lockpicks, because Lockpicks are an amazing sharp starting card. And here we get the Purple Wolf, which can actually be really dangerous right before the Yelmer fight. Though we have Yogurt to help us out. Uh, but we also have two curses in our deck, keep in mind, on most of our heroes. Uh, with Magnus being the only one who doesn't. So, the reason that the Purple Wolf can be dangerous is because they actually do damage instead of just slowing and adding vulnerable. Um, and they do this every turn rather than every two turns. But doing damage against Yelmer will trigger his thorns, and if <laughs> more people get thorns, then you can just end up killing yourself. Um, this is also true for the fights where you just uh, give your enemies, like, I think one of the challenges is giving them all like 12 thorns on Act 2 or like 18 thorns on like Act 3. <laughs> and it can immediately stack right up where you're taking 18 thorns and you're hitting the entire enemy team. So it's <laughs> 18 times 4, you're just like, oh yeah, half my health is gone immediately. That's not great. <laughs> and you still have to attack into your enemies in order to actually kill them, so you have to take more thorns damage. Yeah, doesn't end very well. Um, but here, what's really great is we can steal Yelmer's Thorns with Yogur if we get the Rob card early enough, and we can steal his Reinforce, which normally makes him super tanky against Warriors. Though we do have that vulnerability specifically debuffing the Blunt and Slash, so that we can do a little bit more work. We did get the Rob card, but no attacks, so unfortunately I can't actually get rid of all his Thorns, meaning he's going to do quite a bit of damage. <laughs> um... And also, his regen is stacked way behind his powerful, and I won't be able to steal it anymore, and he used up all his thorns. So yeah, it's actually looking a little bit scary. I do have Mortal Strike though, so we have that decay on him. Now he won't be able to heal up as much as he normally would. Like, if you ever fought Yelmer in an extended fight on Magnus 16, you know by round 4, if he gets to hit you, 1, sometimes your whole team might die, but 2, even if you do survive because you have enough block or something, uh, he can heal up straight to full because he applies Sanctify to your entire team and has some heals of his own. But look at the damage coming out of Yogurt. He nearly finishes off Yelmer right away. That slashing damage really is working out against this tree. So I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> confident I'm going to be able to destroy him. And yeah, that attack right there on the round three, that's where he would heal up a ton normally, and we cut that healing in half. So we're doing pretty good. Uh, powerful here. We have shield charge. We have butchering. I could have killed him, but I decided not to because I wanted to leave it to Magnus. Um, I forget why. But there we go, we have Heiner killing him. <laughs> I thought it was funny that Heiner could also get Mortal Strike. Throw Bolas is actually really good. I'll pause the video here for a second, because like these rewards were actually fairly good. Oh, dang it, I missed it. Um, but we picked up Carnage on Yogurt. We have the Training Dummy on Magnus, so that allows you to get a melee attack card out of the graveyard, which is essentially like just another card that's any attack you've played before. So if you have enough attacks, it's almost always worth it. Uh, he got the gold one, which makes it so that it's permanently reduced by one. 
um, for the rest of the fight. Uh, it does disappear, but it's still pretty good, and permanently reducing a card by one cost if you expect grindy fights is decent. So yeah, you can also make it free and it'll stay in your deck and you can just pick up your best melee attack. Like typically that'll be Carnage uh, right after. So here, we'll continue the video. Um, looking at all these rewards, they all kind of suck. <laughs> like I could have picked up Shield of Thorns on Heiner, but I kind of just wanted the gold in case there's something better. Uh, there's a place where I could tra trade the golden fur. I see Hunting Ring in the shop. Hunting Ring is very good. Um, I also see the... Uh, skill book the manual but i didn't want to get rid of Bree's speed just yet because i want to make sure Bree is fast enough to uh inspire the entire team to be faster so that magnus can then slow the entire enemy team down so i pick up hunting ring expecting to get asmodee on Bree. so there we get it um, meaning she'll also be marking and slowing every turn which is just going to be another good source of damage uh so Bree's really doing a great job of support here yoger is doing a great job getting more damage cards in. I wanted to get more Carnage. I could buy another Carnage here, which was great. Uh, so I can get rid of his Rampages. Rampages are kind of just inferior Carnage at this point. Um, they do d a bit more base damage in uh, if your enemy has Mitigate. But otherwise, Carnage is going to be better. Plus it applies Bleed. So yeah, and it hits more times. So, And it stacks better with Sharp, which we hopefully will get more and more of on Yogur. We do get a... a Increased sharp card on Bree and a few others. <laughs> Honestly, man, I'm going through this so fast I can't even tell you all the upgrades that we're getting. But feel free to pause and look if you want to see other decks. We get ourselves down to close to the minimum level of cards in deck, um, but not quite. And I am drawing through the, our deck really fast, so I'm not too worried. This is a challenge I might have been able to take, but it specifically counters warriors by giving them all reinforced and physical resistances, so I decided not to. <laughs> I figured that was going to be safe. I wasn't sure how powerful I was at this point in the run, because I'm not too used to this team. Uh, so I decided, hey, better play it safe than sorry. I don't want to lose right here. I'm feeling pretty good. We have the... Uh, I did make the swap for, of Warcry, or sorry, War Paint to be the draw one, um, as well as cost one card. And it gives you four powerful instead of three. So I did that because... I thought Magnus had enough energy, and I think I felt like he needed more draw in his deck. Uh, here we can see Sharpen, um, gets Carnage up to actually some respectful damage, but I want to have Sharp even higher on Yogur before I start playing those cards. They don't disappear, it's more just the other cards that he was playing were more effective. Uh, Shield Charge here is actually quite a bit of damage as well. I couldn't quite finish off the Crocodilio before he gets to go, uh, so fortunately for me, he wasn't doing too much damage, though he does speed up the uh, lizard so that he gets a little bit more tanky. But fortunately, none of them were really doing that strong of attacks. Um, and I know they can do better attacks, so I got kind of lucky here. Uh, which didn't make me feel like I was super strong, but did make me feel like I was at least good enough. Um, Mortal Strike being free here is exactly what you want to do with Magnus. This is uh, the bread and butter of his build, is making those high attack cards cheap. So it's very nice. Uh, as for the fresh meat and the premium meat, uh, I was happy to see all of them. I'm trying to get to enough damage to where I could kill that sorcerer in one hit. I am able to make it so that he'll die. I just don't know if anybody else is going to heal him. I don't think that's the case, and I'm able to steal more auras here, but, which makes me feel like I'm in a pretty good spot. Um, Heiner, he did get Steel Forge up, so our entire team has a massive amount of block. You can see Yogurt's at 306. So that a uh, Shield Slam card is going to do quite a bit of damage. Um, <laughs> here, Magnus just keeps going. <laughs> he gets all those fast strikes. Doesn't even kill the front guy, which is kind of sad, honestly. And unfortunately, Bree is going slower for the majority of the fight, meaning she's not giving him that powerful that he desperately needs to do damage. So there's a little bit of a speed conflict with Magnus and Bree. You really want Bree to go first, but... Um, as soon as she loses her fast charges, or as soon as Magnus gains fast charges, he's always going to go first because he has a higher base speed. I could have slowed him down a bit more, but I felt like I wanted him to have enough speed to slow down the entire enemy team if we needed to. So, I don't know. I, I, I think maybe a more optimal build is getting rid of the two extra speed on Magnus um, so that Bree can go first. But it didn't end up hurting too much 
for most of the fights because Bree goes first on the first turn, as long as she has some starting fast charges, which she gets in her starting item, which I'm hoping to replace. So yeah, I'm talking a lot kind of fast. I'm just gonna let it play out for a second here as I get some water. back. Uh, as you can see, like a lot of the flow of these fights too is just <laughs> we don't really target down so much as kill whoever is in front. <laughs> that is all I can do. That's all I'm good at doing. <laughs> Which is not always the best because there's certainly priority targets in these fights that you want to take out. But thankfully with Yogur's uh, Rob, you are able to kind of nerf some of the priority targets. Like that guy in back who has all the thorns, we can steal his regen and thorns. So, ends up not being too bad a lot of the time, or if we want to steal all the buffer, we can steal all the buffer. As long as we get the Rob card at the right time, which I don't think we've been doing a lot. I feel like it's been hiding from us most of the time, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, although maybe I already got it at the start of the fight. It looks like I must have, because I went through my entire deck, so. Didn't quite get the kill on him. See, the lack of targeting here is not very great. We all get silenced, but fortunately that's a mage counter and we have literally zero spells on the team. Feels <laughs> great to just not care about that effect, because that can be a game ender on a lot of other runs, especially like the full mage team. I mean, the full mage team has a lot of, a lot of game enders, I feel like. <laughs> not like the full warrior team. Warriors are just better. <laughs> Um, shield charge here is not doing too much damage. I don't know why exactly. 25. I felt like it should have been doing more, but that guy might just have a ton of physical resist. We don't really have vulnerable on him, so that's probably why. Um, yeah, and, and Yogur didn't have the most, uh, block. He only had like 100, but still. I felt like it would do 50 at least. Uh, we do, we are able to kill that guy in front who has been super tanky. Um, and then we can get to this final, uh, if she's like Lamia or something else, but we throw a bolus at her, we know she's gonna not go until uh, Heiner goes, so we can give the kill to either Magnus or Yogur, preferably Yogur because he gets to play more meat and heal up the team, so Magnus also probably can't get the kill. Uh, Sweeping Strike is definitely losing its usefulness here. Um, oh yeah, Bree can also help us heal up a little bit more before we end the fight, which we definitely want to do. Uh, we don't have enough heals to fully heal at most fights, so we need to take it where we can. I get another purple mortal strike, but this time on Yogur. So, I take that as a pretty good sign. I felt like mortal strike has been very useful in Magnus's deck, so I decided I'd try it out in Yogur's deck. Uh, he does get a pretty good level up with base damage on cards. Um, we'll see when he hits level three. Uh, I'll go over that effect. It's <coughs> it's not like the most powerful effect in the world, and like I said, going the full meat build's probably just better overall. It's a little bit safer, a little bit more healthy, and honestly could probably up your damage a little bit faster. Um, but this is technically a damage source that nobody else has access to, and where he gets damage for every 100 HP he has above uh, 100. No, he just gets damage for every HP point he has above 100 HP. I think it's like 0.3 of the... 0.3% of 100, so it's something like 30% of uh, your HP above 100 gives you extra damage, which is pretty good. Um, there we get the Rob, we get uh, to cheapen either Carnage or Shield Charge, um, but I wanted to cheapen Carnage, so I specifically played Shield Charge first, and then we're going to have a free Carnage that we can hopefully pick up with a training dummy uh, if we get one of those cards later. That's sort of my idea behind uh, Yogur's deck is I want to have training dummies, I want to be having free carnages and be playing those free carnages all the time. Um, yeah, that's most of it. Uh, we won't be able to play Whirlwind in Yogur's deck because he doesn't quite have that energy efficiency. Um, he doesn't cheapen cards as much as uh, the other warriors can. So, And he doesn't also double up on them so there's no real big payoff with Whirlwind. 
Um, whereas Magnus could, of course, play Whirlwind. I did get a push forward, but unfortunately on the wrong hero, so I'm not going to be able to take it. Battle plan on Bree is always something you want. I want the upgraded one, uh, and it costs a lot to upgrade, so I don't necessarily want to take it, but I don't know if I'm going to see another battle plan, so I might as well take it, since I usually plan on getting that at the start of Act 3 anyway. Um, but yeah, it becomes a free card as soon as she hits level 3. Uh, you can get it in your opening hand, and it'll be very, very strong. Um, it lets you set up your entire play, and she gets to uh, put expensive block cards back on top of her deck and have last stands to make them all free or cheap. Um, at least that's the idea, if we could find the expensive block cards, which we'll have to see. There's no guarantee of getting those, for sure. <clears throat> Uh, we always opt for the Blazing Brothers here, by the way, just because they don't have as much physical resist as the Wolfgang does. Um, and the damage output is about the same from either of them, so this is, tends to be an easier fight. Uh, I, I don't know if that's true. I think that's true for uh, spellcasting damage, too. You take the Wolfgang instead of these guys, because these guys have better like fire and other resistances. They don't have good cold resist though, so if you are going a frost team, you can definitely fight these guys instead. Um, whereas I feel like the wolves have a good frost team. Anyways, I think it's all just about the resistances when you're picking the combats at the arena. Um, as you can see, Mortal Strike's doing great damage yet again, uh, and I'm able to play all of my cards and do all of my damage. I'm looking at those damage numbers, feeling pretty excited. I can do a ton to the back guy. I want to kill him because he does way more damage than the Fire Evoker girl, at least most of the time. Um, that shield charge is doing, I, th I didn't quite see, but I think it's enough damage to kill the imp. Um, but my goal is to kill the imp with rampage. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do it, so I just have to opt to kill him with the shield charge and then rampage so I can get more damage on the correct targets. And I'm hoping somehow Heiner has a way to hit the back guy, and then he actually does draw it. I forget that his starting heat ray could potentially hit all units, so <laughs> I was really happy. I was like, Come on, there's got to be a way Heiner can do this, and it worked. <laughs> um, yeah, not a card that's like I'm thinking about in terms of damage. Usually I just like it for the block and the taunt that it gives him with Steel Forge, but hey, it worked out really nicely there. Uh, and th at this point in the fight, I just want to heal up before we fight the Minotaur, because I don't want Bree to go down um, to a massive sweeping strike. Uh, Heiner gets Carnage there, which is really funny. Not something I, I want. Um, the Shield Slam on Magnus is something that I, I'm i thinking about. I was like, well, you know, the other um, Shield Bash has been really strong on Yogur, so maybe this will be good on Heiner. Plus, this has the 4 slow instead of the 2 slow, which can really come in clutch against some of the faster enemies in the game, especially like the clones at the end game. Um, so I pick it up, even though I don't expect to do too much damage most of the time. Uh, I... A little bit of a spoiler, I do think it ends up being a mistake. I, If I was redoing this run, I probably just wouldn't have taken it ever. Um, though there might be one or two times where it was somewhat useful. Overall, though, it generally wasn't worth it. <clears throat> but yeah, here we're able to fairly consistently get to 10 powerful on Yogur. And Yogur ends up being our better damage dealer at this point in the run. At least that's what it feels like. Um, I'm not sure if that's actually true or not, <laughs> but it it definitely felt like uh, I should be supporting Yogur more than Magnus, so I think I start to do that uh, now. Um, I do want to upgrade Shield Charge eventually on Heiner as well. Yes, I've been calling it Shield Slam this entire time, or Shield Bash or whatever. Anyways, it's Shield Charge. <laughs> uh, and yeah, the sharp, I don't have enough of to make Carnage super good, but it's still dealing like 100 damage or so. Uh, Mortal Strike's doing 85, it's pretty good. He's not healing up, I was looking to see if Mortal Strike was needed the, for that decay. Uh, but it's not, and I get Throw Bolas here, which I'm very happy to see, because I know that'll just make it so that Yogur, or sorry, that Heiner gets a chance to go. And if Heiner gets enough block, and he somehow is able to draw Shield Charge once again, then I could potentially get the kill here. Um, unless Magnus just does a lot more damage than I'm expecting, so we'll see if that's the case. I am able to play most of my cards here. I can play Sharpen, I can play the uh, Bladestorm, and look, Magnus actually has the damage. Uh, here's really good rewards. Um, I get a 
challenging shout on Magnus. It's really early to see a epic card. Um, I also get push forward on both Bree and Heiner, which I kind of wanted on both of them. Like it's not as good on Heiner, but sometimes getting um, fast after all the enemies have gone is really nice so that you can speed up your team for the next round uh, because Heiner is basically always going to be going after everybody. Um, challenging Shout, unfortunately, isn't that good, uh, but that battle plan, however, is pretty good. So I think I'll be taking that because it helps Magnus have a little bit more consistency in his deck. And like I said, you really want to have those high cost melee cards in your hand at the time that you play the low cost melee cards. So I'm looking to take that and then upgrade it to the draw three instead of the draw two gain two energize. Um, I think it's just better. And look at that, I do actually level up right after the arena fight, so all those fights we did in the early game ended up paying off, because you don't always do that um, by this time in the act. Uh, at this point, I'm feeling fairly confident that I can take on uh, a tougher fight, because we just leveled up, and usually like that's our power spike. This is where the fights get a little bit harder as well, but they shouldn't be too hard in comparison to our level up. Um, which, by the way, I don't think I went over quite as nicely as I wanted to. I don't know if I can change that back a little bit. Uh, eh, nah, I'm not going to bother. Um, I'll just explain what happened. So Magnus, he makes it so that all his melee attack cards get uh, reduced by one when he draws them at the start of turn. Yogur, he now does extra damage for all the HP he has above 100. Um, I believe it is like a 0.3 ratio. I'd have to double check. Uh, Bree has all her skills reduced uh, whenever she draws. <clears throat> um, sorry, all her skills are reduced at the start of her turn uh, if she draws them at the start. And then Heiner has all his defense cards reduced by one. So a lot of cost reductions here outside of Yogur. Yogur gets more damage. Uh, you do give up the like put a meat in everybody's deck at the start of every turn, <laughs> which. As you can imagine, like if those start to become premium meats, you could ramp up your scaling much, much faster. Uh, but no, I'm just taking that extra damage, and you know, Yogurt's at like 200 HP often here because of all the vitality he gets, so he's at least getting like 30% more damage. Pretty good. It's, it's not the strongest I've ever seen, but it's, it's not terrible. It's like three powerful for him, so it's good, and uh, the cheap... Uh, cost reduction for Magnus is really paying off. Like, you can see he's ending his turn with more energy than he had before. Um, it's hard to make your deck so that, like, it'll transform perfectly by the time you get these energy cost reductions, by the way, so uh, I've, at this point I would expect to just have more energy at the end of most turns, unless I draw a particularly high cost turn uh, card, uh, except in Yogurt's deck, where Yogurt will just keep having expensive stuff. I got an Enrage there. Uh, it is the Fury version. Really funny. <laughs> so Magnus gets a little bit of extra Fury there, and I'm like, mm, maybe I can go Fury on Magnus. Could be really good. Uh, we do go into the Forge. Uh, this is the main reason we're actually going here, is because we want to fight the boss at the end of this area to get the wall for Heiner. It'll slow him down by three, but it'll give him seven extra block charges, which does affect his block that he gives everybody at the start of the uh, fight. And all the block that he then puts on everybody after that, including from Steel Forge as well as more fortify charges, so all of it's very good. It's an insanely strong defensive item for Heiner, and probably something you always want to get with Heiner if you're taking him on your team, unless you have other bigger priorities, but I can't imagine what those would be because this makes him so hard to kill, and it stacks up fortify so much faster, which usually you want to do if you're taking Heiner, though in this case it doesn't really matter that much. Um, the stacking of Fortify, I mean, because you're not really using it for damage scaling. <clears throat> Alright. So yeah, this fight's going pretty well. Uh, I'm feeling fairly strong for this point in the game, as, um, but it is a little bit daunting to see Yogurt not play all his cards. <laughs> or at least not play most of his cards. I feel like I always have half my hand left and I need to make his deck more energy efficient. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I can do to fix it though, because there's no real way to give him more energy and there's no real way to uh, reduce the cost of cards in hand outside of his starting enchantment. So, um, really all you can do is give him cheaper cards and Carnage is about as cheap as I can think of, so maybe it'll work out 
But yeah, I want to be playing all my cards every turn. At least that's the goal when making decks for me. I feel like it's not always the best play, but it is usually the most efficient. Fortunately for us here uh, in the Firelands as well, fire does get stopped by the block uh, um, that warriors create. So it's not really the same threat as like poison or bleed is to warriors. So we can we can really manage it just by blocking a lot more. As you can see, we're getting like 200 block on like everyone every turn because of Bree and Heiner being kind of crazy. Uh, their enchantments are really good for getting high amounts of block in the early game. You do have to be a little bit careful though because as soon as they've gone through their entire deck and played their enchantments, their block uh, proficiency becomes far, far lower. And you start to realize that like you don't actually have uh, 200 block every turn. Instead, you start to get like, uh, you know, 50 or 100 block in the late game, and you're like, man, that's not enough to save my people. So, you do have sort of a time limit in that regard. But hopefully, you don't have to go too many turns in the very late game. I forget how long the final boss, like, takes, but usually, the final boss I want to kill by turn 5. Uh, because he gets the evasion on turn 6 again, and going through one round of evasion is already enough to kill me. Plus he gets rid of all vitality when he goes to the thing, but that's for much, much later in the run. Uh, for now, we're still fighting these guys, and this guy annoyingly summoned <laughs> mosquitoes, so... Uh, <laughs> fortunately, they're not too hard to kill. We have the tools to deal with them. Magnus is able to play his entire hand, and it's a lot of damage. And now I'm thinking Magnus is the one to support rather than Yogur, because if we give him sharp, he's playing a lot more cards. He's playing them all every turn because of just the energy efficiency, so it'll probably go a lot further with him. Um, we do get that free card upgrade for taking the challenge at the start of this fight, so it ended up being pretty worth it, even though we did take some damage. Uh, upgrading push forwards is very good, gives you more block, gives you more speed. Um, upgrading Carnage is just more damage, and having more base damage on Carnage is really good when you're getting that percentage damage modifier uh, that Yogur gets with more health. Um, and then I'm also able to upgrade this Whirlwind that I just picked up, which is very, very nice. Uh, Whirlwind is going to be a way that I try to clear uh, a lot of enemies. I can't double it up like you can with Grookly, so I'm not going to be able to take as many out. But I am going to be able to at least play it with Magnus, because uh, he can go for the uh, cheapen by 5 whenever he plays an attack. So, should do good amount of damage to everything. This is a really hard thing. I slowed down, by the way. This is, hot. This is base speed. No speed up here. Um, just to try to get the max amount of gold and shards. Uh, it's a little bit tricky. I think it was a little bit easier this time. I managed to follow it. I'm like, yeah, it's definitely the right one. I'm still like never sure on these fights, but hey, I get it right there. Easy. Um, so <laughs> on these fights, yeah, it was a fight to find the right thing. Uh, there's that fishing spot there. I don't know who you need, probably like Grookly to get the fish, but uh, unfortunately I just don't have it. So we get nothing for that special event. I was a little bit disappointed, but hey, that's how it goes sometimes. You don't need all the benefits. Uh, and here, Heiner gets a special starting thing uh, at the start of this fight where he gets a improved heat laser once again, which is just more taunt, more block for him, uh, and a little bit more damage, so it's, it's nice to have. Um, we do have follow-up. I did want to make uh, <coughs> Mortal Strike cheaper for some reason. I don't, I'm not sure why I didn't want to play Whirlwind. I think it was because I didn't have enough powerful, but in retrospect, maybe I should have actually just played Whirlwind <laughs> with follow-up attack there. That seems like the right thing. I set it up for next turn, though, because I'm like, yeah, next turn is when I'll kill them, but I... I forgetting that I'm going to kill the front guy every time here, which is, yeah, it, it feels a little bit silly to me now. <laughs> yeah, also we have more than enough block, we're not really taking any damage, so that harder fight that we took at the beginning to get a little bit extra rewards been super worth it. Uh, free upgrades on gold cards is like, I want to say that's like 640 something shards each, so... Yeah, that's just like a massive amount of, amount of money you can save. And hey look, Shield Slam. It did some damage there. It was kind of useful. Was I going to kill them anyway? Absolutely, but it made me feel good a little bit that I took the card. I didn't use it for the slow at all, though. Uh, Heiner also gets the special reaction here. Um, so he gets a little bit of extra shielding and 
I think that's it. I don't think he does anything else. <laughs> just kind of funny. Um, that guy's immune to shackles. I was like, can I shackles the head? That would be insane, right? Like, then he's not going to go fast. But he is the fastest boss in the game, though, at 80 speed. <laughs> I don't think there's anything faster. Uh, he can be slowed. He can be frosted. But I don't think there's any way to really get him down to a manageable speed where you could possibly go beforehand. M maybe if you had enough frost at this point. And maybe, well, definitely if frost was uncapped. <laughs> But yeah, slow is never going to be enough. Um, the rest of these things all start shackled. I know that you have to kill the seat of the driver first, but like I said, uh, I have a hard time targeting, so I'm not sure if I can really go for it. And I wanted to play Whirlwind, but I didn't want to take a ton of damage from his reactive laser that hits my entire team every time he, bl uh, he blocks. So I'm still being a little bit wishy-washy on whether I'm going to go for the front guy or whether I'm going to go for uh, the reactive laser guy right there and at this point i'm like nah just go for the front guy we'll take the mitigation off of the reactive laser and we'll hopefully kill <laughs> more in the future and then was like oh right heiner's hitting everybody so that block was not free i actually got hurt quite a bit and there's a lot of fire stacks on everyone all of a sudden uh 36 damage every turn is no joke and we need to block a lot more fortunately right on cue Bree has her uh super special Every time you play a skill, gain like 15 block, which actually does get upped by all her block increases, so yeah, we're looking really nice now. Um, none of these guys have any heals, so I don't really need to worry about where I'm putting the mortal strike. <clears throat> and uh, at this point, I realize I just need to chew through the front and eventually kill the guy in the back. So we're not going to kill the cannon, which is dropping like nukes on us every turn. I think it literally says it's just a tactical nuke that gets dropped. Volta core, reactive laser, and missile barrage. Okay, that, that, that's a missile barrage, which takes out all of my steel forge um, charges. But that's fine because I have the block that I needed from them. I have the fortify. Uh, although I don't have the fortify this turn, so maybe I didn't have steel forge that turn. Um, here I'm like, oh, shield slam, it's going to be so useful where I can slow the ball down, and that does absolutely nothing. Uh, I do have enough energy to play Whirlwind, but again, reactive laser is a little bit scary, but I had enough block to where I felt at least safe-ish doing it. <clears throat> As for the other moves, uh, yeah, shield slam's doing quite a bit, like, Carnage did a lot there, but I'm finally through this guy's block, he's not going to be able to reactive laser me anymore. We're going to be faster, um, next turn, so... Now I know we can get through this fight in this next turn. And we get, we're gonna get the excellent rating, which is very nice. And there's no reactive block either. We did take some damage though. Magnus is looking hurt, so a little bit worried, but not too worried. Uh, I wanna let uh, Yogurt go here. As you can see, Magnus is gonna literally die next turn because we don't have the fortify. <laughs> um, and I didn't draw as much meat as I wanted to on Yogurt. Uh, I do end up taking guard on, purple guard on uh, Heiner, because I figure I'm going to keep guard around for a while anyways. It's good. It's a good spot fortify card, and that's a good amount of block for two, which actually becomes one every time he draws it, so it's, it's worthwhile enough. Um, I wasn't feeling the energy crunch on Magnus, but I decided to take Blood Rage anyways, just in case I didn't have all the... Like, just in case I didn't have follow-up on the same turn that I had Whirlwind. And Whirlwind stays in the deck as well, so I feel like I started to need more energy in Magnus's deck. Um, I could have taken the Aquamarine Bracelet on Yogurt since he's constantly needing energy too, but at this point I think I'm just more focused on Magnus. And Yogurt needed some armor as well, so it doesn't really hurt much to give it to him. Um, removing two cards could be nice. Having access to an exotic equipment shop when we have 3,000 gold could also be pretty good. Uh, did I take the remove two cards? I think I did. Um, I think I did that because I wasn't sure what the exotic equipment shop was going to give at this point. Like, it might not give anything too good, because it's still only Act 2. Um, whereas the remove two cards is just free money, because it's going to start costing money next act to remove cards, or ba even basic cards from my deck. Um, uh, but as you can see there, the whirlwind gets everything down to pretty much half, and the minotaur is actually going to go down fairly quickly here as well. Uh, <laughs> Again, no attacks with the rob, or nothing to rob really out of the enemies, because Yogurt's always going first. It's one of those weird things where I think rob becomes better when Yogurt is slower. So, like, maybe I should have had him go slower, but then it's also just better for Yogurt to kill enemies before they even go. So, it's it's kind of awkward. Um, he's not the best hyper carry in that respect. And his hyper carry potential is also, I think, a little bit lower, because energy reduction tends to be a bit better. Um... 
But in any case, we are looking okay, even though Heiner got severely hurt. Magnus was able to heal up quite a bit. And we can kill the girl who hasn't gone yet, and yeah, it's looking pretty good. I think Magnus can now finish everybody off uh, with Whirlwind, yep, and the follow-up attack. There we go. Uh, yeah, pretty much finishes everything off by himself. Very, very strong. Heiner, unfortunately, does have to go again, but we get the excellent, uh, so we get better cards, potentially. There's another battle plan, but at this point, I don't want two battle plans in uh, Magnus' deck, especially because he's going to be drawing both first. I could get Piercing Howl, but I kind of want Magnus to just do more damage rather than get more vulnerable on everybody. And with the wolf popping off every turn, I feel like we have enough vulnerable charges uh, going on all the enemies, so I feel like we're good. I can get rid of the guard in Heiner's deck at this point, the basic one, not the purple one. And I can get rid of... Uh, honestly, I don't know too much what I want to get rid of in Bree's deck, but I do get rid of a Helping Hand, um, non-upgraded, of course. And I get rid of Helping Hand in Yogur's deck because, or I would get rid of one if I could, but he's actually uh, too low on cards. And I can get rid of War Paint here because I think I have enough, um, maybe I get rid of Fast Strike. I have enough Powerful at this point where Magnus is getting Powerful from, uh, maybe not at this point, no. Actually, yeah, I do need the Powerful on Magnus still. Uh, he still doesn't get enough from Bree, uh, guaranteed at least. We want him always to be at 10 so he's doing 100% more damage. Um... Again, I'm worried about the next patch where he's going to be doing, or <laughs> my next playthrough where he's only going to have 70% damage from all the powerful stacks because they'll be reducing it by 3. But we'll see how that goes. I mean, that's only 10% uh, more than you would get from stacking up to 12 powerful and then they don't all fall off every turn, so you don't need as many permanent sources of powerful running through your decks. Uh, it's definitely going to make some considerations more interesting, but I think overall it's just going to make the game harder. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, though. Um... Here we are able to uh, get the kill on round one. So that's always a great sign. Uh, right before the final boss, you're like, yeah, finish round one. Great because Heiner is in dire straits and we don't want him to die. He is our main tank. And if he goes down, the rest of the team will soon follow. <clears throat> but with the lava boss, I'm fairly confident that uh, Mortal Strike will cap his healing enough that we'll actually be able to get through him. And although we don't have the damage to finish him off in like one turn, like I know we're going to have to survive at least a few turns, I feel fairly confident that he's not going to be too big of an issue. We'll see how uh, that goes here though. I think one of the other things that's funny about having Rob with Yogurt is, like, I'm not often paying attention to all of the statuses that enemies buff themselves with. <laughs> so, like, every boss that I'm fighting, I'm like, hmm, maybe I can wait till he gets some really juicy, like, bonuses on him and then I'll steal those auras, not realizing that some of them just don't put anything useful on them or they give themselves, like, some fast charges and that's it. Or a lot of them are about debuffing you, so... <laughs> Yeah, uh, fortunately we do draw the Mortal Strike before he ends up getting to go and heal. Um, I'm hoping to maybe finish him off on round two if I can with Yogurt, but that really depends on how good his draw is right here, and it's a lot of meat. Get some sharp. And yeah, unfortunately not a lot of damage. Um, the Steel Auras is kind of pointless, though you can steal from your friends. So I could steal Heiner's like 13 to fortify. I'm not sure why I would do that to Heiner. Be a little bit rude. Uh, Steel Forge keeps Heiner more than alive there. I took a full meteor shower to the face. It looked like it struck like way more times than five, <laughs> but that was all right. Um, I had to double check like how many times it repeated there because <laughs> it looked kind of scary. Uh, but Heiner took it like a champ. Didn't even lose block out of that, I think. Or if he did, it was almost nothing. Um, and yeah, the 315 block on Yogurt lets him do a lot of damage. Uh, Repetition training, that's exactly what I want to see. It's not called training dummy, but it has a training dummy on it. But yeah, those repetition trainings, I want more of those in the deck because, like I said, I want to be playing more free carnages with Yogurt. Um, Volcanic Axe is an interesting pick here because it does transform all my damage to fire. I am forgetting right now that uh, the vulnerability only affects physical damage. So, but I'm like, hmm, if Heiner does only fire damage, then he'll always have his damage buffed because it'll be... Uh, increased by the fortify that he gets but in retrospect i'm pretty sure that was a huge mistake like that's gonna nerf his damage more than it helps because the only damage he normally does is blunt anyways 
So it really is just kind of silly. I was like, hmm, but maybe having extra sources of damage will be good. And I'll be putting fire sacks on people sometimes. I don't know. Bad idea. Don't do it. Uh, it it's a mistake to take the lava axe right there. Uh, I did it, and I wasn't punished, really. But yeah, definitely a mistake of the run. Wasn't thinking fully through with all the perks that I had. Uh, we see a second Dream Sphere in this shop, but I have to buy stimulant pills. Stimulant pills are one of the best times in the game. Um, at this point, I also just want Yoga to be somewhat tanky. It's not super important that he goes very fast, but the stainless armor there, where you dispel one every turn, is super strong. So I feel like that we're going to be able to survive a lot better, especially because, like, like I said, one of the few weaknesses warriors have is getting all those statuses like bleed and poison on them, and it can just do rack up damage so quickly. So if, if you're dispelling them every turn, like Yogur's going to survive quite a while, especially also because we're going to be stacking vitality on him and getting him up to a whole ton of health. As you can see, he already has 201 health, and we want to get that much, much higher, up to the maximum cap of vitality, just so he's doing as much damage as possible. Uh, I forget exactly how much damage that ends up being, but if I take another look here, I'm going to pause for just a second so I can go over and check it out. Um, if I do this, is that good? No, I have to... Oh, no, I messed it up. Uh, one second. We're going to get Lava Town, read Lava Boss. Yeah, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Um, as you can see, getting a lot of things on my card. It's right there. Sorry about this. Uh, I'm going to leave it in the video because I definitely don't want to feel like, definitely don't feel like editing it. Um, I'm going to look at Yoga really quick here. And the Big Bad Wolf, how much is it? So you get 1% for every 3 HP you have above 100. So yeah. <laughs> um... 1% for every three is about a third. It is actually like 33%, which is pretty good. Um, so yeah, if you have like 600 health on uh, Yogurt, that does end up being, what, 33 times 5? It's like 165% extra damage, which is a lot of damage. That's, that's like sometimes, I mean, that's more than 10 full stacks of powerful with the powerful perk on. So that's something that's pretty good. Uh, Definitely nothing to scoff at, even though I am constantly talking about how the other stuff is better. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. Alright. Oh, I guess you couldn't see the perk. But that's fine. Um, yeah, here we're just editing our decks, making sure that everything is relatively efficient. I do want to have a repetition training up. Um, I made it so that it makes the carnages even cheaper. Uh, potentially, if I'm taking them back out of the draw pile. Uh, so now Yogur has four uh, permanent cost reductions on cards. Um, they won't always hit everything I want, because Rob always hits the highest cost card in your hand, which might not always be Carnage. Um, but still is pretty good. Uh, I don't go down to the full minimum cards in deck as I should, and Magnus has a 22 card deck right now, which is definitely a lot more than he should have. However, he a lot of his cards do draw, so I feel like it's still somewhat consistent, and I'm not really sure what I want to draw. Like, I'm not really banking on drawing Whirlwind every turn, because, like, it doesn't kill all the enemies anyways, especially first turn. Like, in some ways, I want it to be drawn the second turn when I have more sharp, more powerful. Um, so, yeah, it's, it wasn't something I was worried about. <clears throat> Mortal Strike I do on that front guy because I don't remember if he heals and it just did more damage to the guy I wanted to. So, I felt like that was going to be better. They actually do get like a full beaver team here, which is pretty good, honestly. Like, that's a stronger team than I uh, would normally expect to see on random battles. So, definitely makes this one a bit more of a challenge. Unfortunately, we get none of the cheap pain cards on uh, Yogur's turn, which is... A little upsetting, but we should be able to get those repetition trainings next turn so we can have access to our carnages um, when we get them more sharp on. And again, these guys have shackles on. Like, man, like they can't stop shackles shacklesing my team. Uh, we did get follow up, we did get whirlwind, so we were able to make it much cheaper. Uh, at this point, I have five energy. Um, whirlwind is able to pop off. It doesn't stay cheap, unfortunately, because it only lasts till I get it discarded, but we can get Carnage back out. We end up getting enough damage to kill the guy in back. Uh, so even if we can't unshackle Zyogre, we uh, still eliminated someone. But Bree did draw her Unshackles Helping Hands, which I upgraded, because I knew Shackles is always a problem that we're bound to end up facing. 
so yeah, uh, that ends up being a really good call on my part. We get rid of another enemy, and ideally we get rid of the guy in front as well. I'm just double checking to make sure that I can do that. <laughs> um, looking back on it, yeah, maybe I, I don't know, maybe I could have in some other way. But anyways, only one enemy got to go. We have more than enough block. Uh, this fight ends up not being too much of a threat, despite the synergy that they all share. And man, look at that, 234 damage from Heiner, doing real well. Uh, unfortunately, I find a purple last stand on Magnus. He's not taking any defense cards, so I opt for the zero cost bluff instead. Um, and we get an enrage on Bree. So, getting some good energy cards on our warriors, which is very nice. Not something you can always rely on. Uh, Tiki Mask is a really good pick here for having Sharp at the start of turn, but I don't think I really need it. Um, I do want to take War Banner, but I was debating who I would take it on. Heiner doesn't really benefit because he's not getting more powerful, whereas at least Yogur has a better powerful perk, and I end up thinking that's worth it. Um, because Yogur has that powerful too, I get the Tiki Mask on uh, Magnus, because I figure having more sharp is going to be better if uh, Yogur is giving more, more powerful more consistently. So, uh, again, we'll have to see if that really pays off. The Shield Slam here being more pointless. Um, yeah, that, that was such a mistake to take. I, I so rarely play it, and I usually am just sad to see it. Ugh, man, looking back on this run, definitely one of the things I most regret. <laughs> um, they're not my most regretted uh, pit thing that I did on this run. That comes later. Definitely look forward to that. <laughs> For right now, though, uh, fights are going pretty well. Uh, I like doing this boss fight. Again, it's easier than most regular fights at this point because it doesn't have the e champion. Or rather, the champion is not as bad, and it's a three-person fight instead of four, so it's... Uh, overall, it's just way easier. Uh, they're not really much of a threat to our team. They're usually better against wizards anyway. So, yeah. Uh, nothing to worry about. Kind of just easy stomp of a fight. Warriors are good. Uh, although Magnus keeps taking damage. And I do need to heal him up more. Gotta, gotta let him eat some more meat. That's why the wolf bros are good together, is because they really uh, power each other up. As much as like Magnus wants to be like a stand-up guy, Yogurt keeps tempting him with that meat, and he's like, ah, yeah, no, I really like that. I am a wolf after all, you know? That's, this juicy steak smells so good. Um, I don't opt for a bloodbath here, because I don't think I'm going to be bleeding the enemy that much. What's funny about that, though, is I do opt for blood feeding, because having a little bit of extra healing can be very good uh, for uh, are your main tank that doesn't normally have access to healing. Uh, I get really salty about the destroyer gauntlets, which, like, look at this. I should absolutely 110% take destroyer gauntlets on uh, Heiner rather than the lava axe because, again, vulnerability is not affecting any other damage types or resistances outside of the <coughs> um, physical ones. So, yeah, Destroyer Gauntlets would have been amazing on Heiner here. I'm just a complete idiot, and I don't take it. Uh, I mean, amazing is a kind of a stretch, but it just would have been better. Um, uh, I did get a, another War Banner, though, so that means I'm going to get a Purple War Banner, which instead of at the first turn of combat, it's going to be literally every turn uh, you go that you get the Powerful. So, yeah, that is just fantastic, although it does mean Magnus isn't going to be getting Powerful from Yogurt a lot of the time. So it's just a little bit of give and take there, but it's still very nice to have. Uh, I am looking for a weapon on Magnus at some point. I'm not sure what weapon I want. I just want something. Uh, we'll see what I get, though. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be opting for the middle route, and I actually want to go use the uh, new path that the other wolf guy provides so I can go down and fight the spider lady. Um, mainly just because I forget his interactions with Yogurt and... Uh, Magnus, so I want to learn what those are, um, even though I could sell some things to him, and in retrospect, that would have been a much better idea, because I have way too many things to sell, and not enough places where I could sell it, so yeah. <laughs> a little bit unfortunate, but it's fine. Um, we'll, we'll take whatever he gives us with our nice character interactions instead, you know? That's, learning about the game is its own reward in some ways, although... In many ways, uh, the rewards of the game are their own reward, and I'd much 
would have preferred those. <laughs> um, I do hate fighting the guys who get rid of all your block on your front character, because that is Heiner's whole point, and god, purging block is just so annoying. Like, what? I just, it feels weird, because like, it doesn't feel like there's a lot of counterplay. Then again, like I'm not taking too much damage, so it's kind of okay, but it's only okay, because like they didn't go that fast, and other people hit me first. I don't know. It, it, it's definitely a little bit odd. Like, there's a lot of counters in this game, and going up against a random counter and losing to it feels kind of bad, because that feels kind of out of your control. But such is the nature of random battles, I guess. <clears throat> it is not something that is forced upon the player. You choose it yourself. So I understand. Uh, but here, Yogurt's actually doing pretty good damage. We are going to be able to take out the Draco Mancer before they go, and in fact, put enough bleed on everybody so that they're all going to die. Which is great. Uh, I'm not taking too much damage. Um, here is actually a really huge pick. I am thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, you know what? Uh, Magnus hasn't had as much block as Yogurt for some reason. I'm not really sure why. Um, everybody gets like the same amount. Maybe it's because he attacks more with his wolf and hits thorns more. But uh, Bouncing Shield upgraded uh, to deal 1.5 and purge your shield. That sounds really, really strong. Like We've seen how much like 0.5 damage has been doing. Um, and we have the offensive mastery, so we can make it cost four. Plus, it's just a high cost attack, anyways, although it's a ranged attack. That's my big problem with it, is that the uh, follow up only affects melee attacks. So, I'm not going to be able to reduce its cost uh, by my. Or, no, I think I can reduce its cost with follow up attack, but I don't reduce its cost with my passive. So, uh, it is one of the downsides to Bouncing Shield, but the potential damage payoff is huge. Um, here I don't actually have a cheap attack I can do with Whirlwind, so I can't do the follow-up, like, Whirlwind Strike easily, so I had to, like, kind of draw into it. Fortunately, Magnus has enough ways to do that. Unfortunately, like I said, like, if you don't have a lot going on your first turn, like, you're not very sharp, you don't have all the powerful charges, like, it just doesn't do that much. Like, look, look how little damage these guys took, and they're just a regular fight. I mean, I know the Crocodilios have some... Uh, really good physical resistance, but man, that just didn't feel that great. <laughs> um, though, now it would probably be better because there's a lot of vulnerable. Um, so here we are able to reduce Bladestorm in hand. I think I'd be better off getting rid of Bladestorm um, and maybe actually going back to the cheaper shield charge at this point, just so that I could hit those carnages more often uh, with the cheapen from Rob. But uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, that's just me thinking back on how I could have improved these decks a little bit further while still going with the same theme. I'm sure there's a lot of other builds you could do as well. Uh, 157 block is a lot, and how much damage is that uh, Bouncing Shield doing? Let's see, make sure I get up to 10 powerful. Um, I'm at the full 10. Ooh, look, 400. <laughs> just, ooh, take out the entirety of the Crocodile's HP. That's, that's really something. <laughs> Very, very good. Of course, it does get rid of all your blocks, so you want to make sure that you're getting block after the fact, or at least not going to take a hit, because hopefully everything dies. Um, still, didn't kill everything, but Yogurt is here to finish the job and heal me up with meat, so actually ends up being better that way. Uh, it's good that I didn't do too much damage. Shake it off, I don't feel like I need, because I have the uh, Dispel Armor. And here we are leveling up. We take the last Guardian with Hyder, gives him more Fortify charges, and gives him a kind of like last stand if he does go down to a certain amount of HP. It doesn't always trigger because sometimes you take too much damage. Uh, Command and Conquer is our heal, so we're going to recover 6% HP every time we play a skill for four skills. And you get the plus seven block charges, so it's actually really good to stack with your defensive strategy, um, which gives you the block for every skill that you play. Um, it also gives all heroes vitality, powerful, and uh, damage mitigate. The damage mitigate you can't increase in any way, but we do have powerful and vitality being increased, so that'll give us a lot there. Uh, the gorge is kind of fun, um, though we don't have too much food because we get food whenever an enemy dies. That's uh, the basic thing that Yogurt gets. And we have the starting card in his deck where you can play it and get a food, but yeah, there's not a ton of ways that we're actually getting food so it's somewhat tricky to trigger which is a little bit weird for his damage carry path but still you recover 25 percent hp and then you put gorge into your hand and gorge deals uh 0.3 percent of your hp uh, as damage and applies 16 bleed and gives you gourmet meat in your hand which gourmet meat is basically just a better premium meat increasing all your stats and stuff so yeah it's a really good card um thunderclap on magnus of course because you're going to 
do 200% damage with one hit. That's the whole idea with the Whirlwind uh, follow-up strike attack. You have to play the follow-up strike, do a strike, and then you do Thunderclap and you have a plus 200% damage uh, Whirlwind. Of course, you want to have all your other modifiers on there first, like Sharp and uh, Powerful, which, again, Magnus probably isn't going to get first turn. So this is the one downside about this build is like I feel like this isn't the best Magnus uh, carry showcase, but it's the Wolf Bros uh, carry, so it's pretty good. Also, I don't think I've like really done a Magnus carry <laughs> um, outside of this run. So it's kind of a look at that luck. We needed a seven to jump across, and I got actually whirlwind, which gave us a critical success on jumping across. That was just. Ooh, felt so good. Uh, here I realized that we could actually pick up the spider pet, Leanti, and I was like, hmm, might as well. Like, can't really hurt. Uh, gotta open that mysterious cocoon, get a little baby spider. And, uh, yeah, Yogur didn't have a pet yet, so might as well take that. Um, I forget what, like, the optimal things are to do here. I come here so rarely, despite this being, like, the first place we went when we, uh, played our game initially. It was just a death trap. <laughs> um, yep. The fights here aren't too hard. These are just, again, more basic, like, uh, guaranteed fights. So as many of those as we can take as possible will help us win the run. Um, I do have the follow-up strike thunderclap, and I realized that that was a very bad move because now I can't really cheapen whirlwind without uh, using thunderclap. So... I just have to have enough energy, which is possible, but not not the most brilliant move, not the most energy efficient thing I could possibly do. Um, again, pillage here. I don't really have anything to rob in terms of enemy auras, so I opt to play that later, and hopefully I can rob something good in uh, the next round. But honestly, most enemies don't really give too many auras, so it's probably a moot point. Uh, though I know that enemy in back, he can give Fortify to the entire team, like he just did, and give Powerful, and yeah, look at that, they have, man, they have Reinforce, they have Insulate, and they have Courage, so they're resisting everything, damn. Um, so, I, my, funny enough, the Thunderclap does make it so my Wolf does a little bit more damage, uh, and I'm like, hmm, I need more energy, good thing I took Blood Rage. <laughs> Uh, yeah, as you see, that did do a ton of damage on Whirlwind. Um, I was more stacked that second turn. So usually I'm going to be wanting to play Whirlwind second turn with Thunderclap. And there's a purple Sharpen on Bree. The perfect person to have it gets it. Uh, Enrage on Magnus, just more energy. This is great. Plus we can maybe upgrade that later and get more Fury. Might as well get the extra damage out of it. I don't think Bleed will end up killing me, right? Um... Especially because I can't stack it as fast as Grookly can, and I don't have that super, like, bleed does double damage or 50% more damage perk. That one is such a killer. <laughs> uh, then again, I also have no way to remove bleed, so, you know, definitely could stack up if the rounds go too long, but with more rage, how long could they really go anyways? Each rage stack giving you 3% extra damage. Um... Yeah, uh, as for this fight, we are fighting the Spider Queen. I kind of forget what she does uh, it, during the fight, because, like, again, I, I don't really come here too often. So I'm hoping that it's nothing too crazy. I kind of remember she has a stun, and I think she summons more spiders, or at least puts, like, summon spider cards in your deck. Um, but, yeah, she does actually end up uh, shacklessing all of us, which I didn't remember, and then, then she stuns Magnus, so he doesn't get to go, which... Yeah, this, <laughs> this started to scare me just a little bit. Thankfully, I do have those helping hands that unshackles people. Um, and Heiner was able to do that before he uh, went on the... I guess he was just able to do that in general. Yeah, because he was going first. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, we do have Feed the Rich, so if we can play another food, we can get another really high damage card. And there's our cheap Carnages. Uh, we can steal her buffs, so... There's a uh, Rob coming in really clutch, actually stealing some very meaningful uh, resistances there. Um, I do want to give Magnus more sharp this turn since he'll actually be able to go, unlike last turn. And we have him up to some powerful. Four powerful is not too bad. Could be better though. Get some enraged. Uh, get a bouncing shield. I'm at 343 on the bouncing shield. The damage looks pretty good. What does that end up being? 
I have, yeah, I have just so much energy, so much damage here. I'm like, I have to have a way to kill, right? Like, guaranteed? I can, can I play Whirlwind? I can. I can follow up Whirlwind, and then I can Bouncing Shield, which does 1,300 damage. So, <laughs> kind of really unnecessary there, but uh, that, that felt great. What a wonderful turn. Um, second Wind. Again, we're finding a lot of these, like, legendary epic cards early. And most of the epic cards for Warriors are pretty good. So, very worth taking in that second wind. Um, I, w I wasn't sure if I wanted that repetition for a Yogurt or not, because he already had like three in his deck. Uh, Brass Amulet, I'm like, man, that is really good. I don't want to get rid of Marked Ring. I don't want to get rid of the Overheat, giving uh, Yogurt more powerful. And I don't want to get rid of Magnus's energy. So yeah, I guess Heiner's the only one who's going to be able to take that. It feels weird and wrong, but sure. Um, I am thinking about Venom Fang for Magnus because uh, he gives some extra vulnerable charges plus a little bit more slashing and uh, piercing damage, so might as well take that. The poison stacks aren't going to matter, but it's not, it's not that impactful anyway. Like, poison's not really uh, very meaningful damage most of the time. Even when you do go a more poison-oriented build, because it can only stack up to 200, so you're really looking on the or at the other synergies. And look at this, we have Poison Fields, which would be immune to poison. Like, poison's so bad. <laughs> they really... I feel like Poison on Madness 16, like, should really be restricted less than it currently is. Like, I get it. It, it can be powerful when it stacks pretty high. Like, Poison and Bleed are some of the best things to do outside of the restricted power. But they are so bad when restricted power is on that they're almost never worth going for. I really want to see a balance change there at some point. A little disappointed not to see like too many more balance changes on the madness levels, but I know that the game isn't fully like built with the uh, max madness in mind. That's really just a thing for me, so I can't complain too much. Uh, here we did get Gorge. Gorge did 268 damage. It's just a whole lot of damage. Uh, Yogurt's up to 300 HP, so that's 60% more damage he's dealing with everything. Um, of course, this does mean that like if Yogurt takes damage, he starts doing less uh, damage. Sorry, I feel like I've been saying damage too much. Um, so it's definitely important that he gets all the block on him uh, to reduce the amount of damage that he would be uh, dishing out, or taking, so that he can dish out more. Um, so yeah, that's also sort of why I went with a full warrior team with Yogurt, because I realized, I was like, yeah, stacking vitality is great and all, but if Yogurt's going to be going and needs his health to deal damage, then we need more block, and he's not going to be blocking, so, yeah. Uh, there, there's other builds you can do with him. You could probably, like, send him up front to be the tank and, like, just hit much later and heal him up afterwards. Like, there's all sorts of ways you could build this, but I really wanted the Wolf Bros to be on a team together, despite the fact that they hate each other now. Um, Pummel is, Purple Pummel is so good on the Bree, like, Blunt carry, which I had been, like, messing around with a little bit before this fight. We've already done, like, the Bree, Blunt, and Frost carry, but we didn't do it on video. Um, but still something I think about, like, doing every now and then. Uh, really fun build. Bree can carry super hard, um, rather than just being an amazing support all the time. Uh, we did get these free upgrades though, so we're able to upgrade our Carnages, and again, I'm just upgrading these things so that they have a little bit more base damage, so that the percentage damage increase goes a little bit further. Uh, it also lets them bleed a little bit more, so it's not bad at the end of the day anyway. Uh, we have Enrage. There's no real reason for second win just yet, though it does give us energy. Um, it is also a skill, so it can trigger some of our skill effects. I opt to go for the heals and the uh, damage mitigate rather than holding on to the heal. Because I'm hoping um, that all the taunting that these Hydras do are going to work against them when we start playing all these Carnages. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, there's an argument to maybe go Carnage here instead of Whirlwind. So that's what I'm really debating between right now. Um, and I do decide to go for the Carnage. Figure, get a bunch of cheap Carnages. Magnus is going to have free Carnage in his deck. We'll go Thunderclap. We'll have that for next turn. Uh, that's probably going to be pretty good. Uh, similarly, I'm like, hmm... I have more carnages with uh, Yogurt. That's probably what I should be doing. Uh, I'd play a Sharpen here because I feel like that actually ends up doing more damage, plus it's enough to kill him anyways. Uh, we also have the Shield Charge to extra kill him, um, which I'm debating if I even need to play that because he's going to die on, next, on his next turn, but then I realized, no, wait, he's not because that back Hydra is going to put healing on everybody and it's going to make life painful. Uh, so, yeah. 
probably a good thing that I ended up killing him because I think it was going to be pretty fast next turn. Um, these hydras also can't be shackles, uh, of course, because, you know, their feet don't exist. That's... <laughs> it's what makes sense, despite the fact that I feel like you'd wrap the chains around their bodies and, like, they would sink into the water. That would be pretty effective, but nah. Uh, we can slow them, of course, because uh, stomping on their heads would uh, slow them all by a good significant portion, uh, meaning that Magnus and Bree are now faster than even the fastest hydras, though not if they duck underwater and then come out at, like, 40 speed. Um, so, uh, as I'm saying all this, we are killing a Hydra head per turn, uh, which is exactly what you want to be doing in this fight. Um, well, I mean, ideally you're killing everybody, uh, or all the heads at once, but killing uh, one each turn is usually going to be enough to get you there. And if we can kill the Hydra in back this turn, then we'll be even even in uh, we'll be in even better shape. Man, words are slipping away from me at this point. It's been, a, it's been a lot of talking in a relatively long period of time. Got an hour on this video already. Uh, which, by the way, if you did enjoy the video and you've stuck around this long, please leave a like. It does help encourage me to do more of these in the future. I'm looking forward to playing more of the DLC and exploring that. Uh, I'm hoping to do some of that tonight even as I record this video. Uh, probably just do a little bit of a fast run to unlock the new characters. We'll play on the highest mad madness difficulty. Should be a fun time. Um, I'm really excited to see what the new characters can do. I don't think they needed to create more warriors, even though I know they're multi-class warriors. It just feels weird. <laughs> that, like, it's, uh, I'm like, warriors, you already created Yogurt, so they already had five, and now they have, like, technically seven? I don't know. More full warrior teams, though. Hey, could be fun. Uh, Titanfall. Titanfall is one of those cards that I'm always looking for on Yogurt because it is HP percent damage. Um, Purple Grinding Wheel is also very, very tempting, but I have to pick between that and Carnage on Magnus, and I never know if I'm going to see another Carnage again, right? So, like, this is one of the last times I could potentially pick it up, but Grinding Wheel I might see more. In the end, though, Purple Grinding Wheel is really, really strong. Um, so it, it, I think it's worth picking up because, like, upping your damage by potentially like 20 with 5 energy for the rest of the fight like means that I could scale up Yoga really fast or I could scale up Magnus really fast even if I do have to take a turn off to do so. Uh, here I do end up finding yet another Dream Sphere so I didn't even have to buy one now I get to have a purple one and I can reduce the cost of cards in hand uh, make things much cheaper. Uh, I know they nerfed Dream Sphere in the most recent patch. I'm not really sure why. I mean, I guess it was a kind of like really good weapon if you weren't trying to deal damage. I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. Uh, it, it was good. It's just like, I don't know. I don't, I don't feel like it was that strong. Um, I did get rid of Tiki Mask just in case uh, I couldn't fix the Bree going slower than Magnus problem that I'm currently having. Um, in town, let's go see. I gotta speed this up pretty fast, so... I have to go through this. Uh, looking at Continuum Blade, I could draw more cards for every attack I play, but I don't really, I'm not really worried about drawing just yet, and I really want to make sure that I have enough money to get rid of all the bad cards in my deck. Um, uh, still thinking about Advanced Handbook. I want to re-roll because I want speed on Bree. That was the main thing that I wanted to find here was to make sure Bree could get maximum speed. Didn't have any speed items, so. Unfortunately, the reroll didn't give me any either, and now I can buy this Golden Laurel, which Golden Laurel is great. Like, hey, every turn getting more draw, and all the Inspire Charges on Heroes gives plus 6% to resistance and healing received, which the healing isn't that big, but the resistances can matter quite a bit, and then just having more draw on all heroes every turn, very, very strong. Definitely better than Lockpicks um, at this point, despite Lockpicks being a personal favorite of mine. Uh, <laughs> They're, the tier of items here is uh, quite a bit different. It is really expensive though, so that will be all my money if I decide to purchase it, which I do, because why not? <laughs> um, yeah, here I, I'm like, man, Moral Strikes, I don't think it's gonna be useful anymore. Like I'm not really gonna be facing too much more healing and it's kind of getting in the way of uh, some of my other cards that I wanna be drawing like Whirlwind or Carnages. Um, so I don't think I need it as much. Push forward, I opt to change into the plus four speed because I realize that's probably going to be in the, or I, yeah, I have one at plus four and I have one at the plus five speed so that if Reed never gets another fast item again, uh, Bree actually can outspeed the final clones if she draws one of the push forwards first. So uh, that's my plan for the final fight, uh, which I do want to be thinking about more at this point. Um, Bouncing Shield is another, argu like, arguably I could have bought Bouncing Shield here and that would have been pretty worth it on Yogurt. 
I decide not to. Uh, I do think about every single path here. The uh, jade that I have, or this big, like, saf is it jade? I don't know. The, the big ruby that I have, um, it reduces spells, so it's not really good if I go to the top. Uh, it creates a weapon that reduces spells by, like, five or something like that. Uh, some, something that's pretty damn good, but, like, it doesn't work for warriors, so obviously pointless. The sheep cloak gives you, like, sanctify when or gives enemies sanctify when they hit you so it's like eh, not that great either so i decided i'm gonna go toward the middle path to get the chest in the middle um even though i could go to the shop on the lower right path here because i'm like hey you know what the chest in the middle always usually has like really good items <laughs> um generally it has a like epic tier item or two and most of the epic tier items are really good for warriors so yeah, I mean, they're mostly, they're really good for everything, but, like, I don't think there's a single epic tier item that's bad on warriors, <laughs> unlike some of the other classes, like Mountain King and others. Um, and, oh, yeah, and Mountain King and the Shields in particular, they're good on warriors versus, like, other classes not working with them too well. Uh, this fight, I was like, eh, I'm a little wary of the monk, but, like, I'm hopeful that I can outgrind them. Um... I, I do remember like facing some problems here though like it was actually ended up being tougher than I thought I think it's mainly because they can get rid of um, or they can heal up so much so yeah and then like I did shield slam or something where I got rid of all my block oh no they had thorn so all oh, my block just ended up leaving anyway <clears throat> so yeah my hope here was to kill the monk like I said I don't really have the best targeting so I'm not guaranteed to kill the monk at all uh, especially now because uh, Carnage is not really that good and I need to draw a food and I don't so yeah I think I actually have to restart this fight if I, if I recall correctly <laughs> like I'm pretty sure the monk is about to devastate my whole team here because if you look the angel just sped everybody up the monk did damage through all of our block this guy does damage through all of our block um, they don't care about it at all and yeah now my entire team is just kind of dying <laughs> that was <laughs> we started this fight at full health that was really really bad i have to restart this that was that was not good i need to take out either the monk or the front guy and because i can't really like choose my targets too well i figure i might as well go for the guy in front um it's gonna end up being better in the long run i save thunderclap for the next turn so that i have whirlwind to do massive amounts of damage because i don't think i did that the first turn i think i kind of messed up that fight a little bit so this time i remember that i can be amazing um i don't sharpen up magnus for some reason though which i feel like would have been even better if i'm planning on the whirlwind plan but i think i just want to kill the guy in front so that i don't die this upcoming turn um Though, no, it was round two, that, or maybe it was round three, at the start of round three that they killed me, so. Yeah, I think this turn I'm fine, because I have Steel Forge. Um, this is where we'll get up to a bunch of block, and they're not going to do all their crazy damage this very turn. Yeah, it's going to be the turn after. So yeah, we get two turns to set up, and now I feel a lot more confident that we can at least kill one of these guys in front. And to be honest, if I just hold up my block on Magnus and give him Pax Powerful, I'm going to have all that with Thunderclap and uh, Shield Bounce, or Bouncing Shield. So, yeah. I could have done that or Bouncing Shield, uh, and I chose to Whirlwind instead, but I think Bouncing Shield actually would have been a little bit more there if I had looked at all. I think I could have killed like the Angel and the Monk in the back, but not a big deal. Either way, we're still going to come out of this fight pretty far ahead, and the Monk dies as well. So, yeah. Like I said, uh, this fight does still need to be handled with care and all the fights on axe uh four and up are no joke they can always kill you even if you have a really good build you just uh need to take them seriously um the angel here isn't too much of a threat on its own however so uh, it can't deal damage through block i'm not really scared uh, we have carnages we're ramping up in damage all the time i can give yoger uh 20 extra sharp right here and Magnus almost finishes off the Angel by himself anyways. Leonti there doing a lot of damage. That Carnage was doing mega damage. Um, unfortunately, another, like, a lot of good takes here. I do want more push forwards uh, in Breeze deck, so I'm going to take that. I kind of want Grinding Wheel, but I'm not really sure I want it on Yogurt. Titanfall, I'm like, man, should Heiner have another way to deal damage? Uh, you know what? Yeah. It's another way to apply vulnerability, too, so it's not bad. Um... So right now I need to go south and fight the black constructs so that I can uh, 
you know, go get the key. And instead I picked north because I'm like, hmm, you know, I haven't been here in a while. I haven't, uh, like, faced the the north guys in a little bit. So, you know, I, I just kind of feel like fighting holy. Like, it doesn't really matter much, like, who I fight here. So I, I really just, like, I feel like fighting these, uh, these uh, holy fighters. So uh, it's going to be a bit before I, I realize what I've just done. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, my reaction to it that night, you have to understand that too, that this is like pretty late at night, I'm like fairly tired, it's, gosh, I want to say it's like, it's close to midnight, and I, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I'm like, man, I, I don't know, this run's been going on for like five hours now, um, on and off, I took a little bit of breaks here and there, uh, so I, uh, <laughs> I may have made some mistakes, <laughs> and... I'm going to be kicking myself about it for a while. Um, yeah. For those of you who don't know what happened, I'll, uh, I'll enlighten you right after the fight. But, uh, yeah. Needless to say, it's not the best look. Um, the fight, however, is going pretty well. Them making all my sharp into, like, bleed, I think is what they did, is fairly annoying. I forgot that they do that. I, like, I almost forget that every time, and, like, I'm taking a ton of damage here, but fortunately, Bree has her heal, so I don't get punished too heavily. Uh, Magnus is going to be he healing up to pretty much full. Uh, we have the slow bolas, or the throw bolas, so I can slow them down. Probably should have upgraded that so that it chained, because Bree doesn't really have energy problems. Uh, it's, it's not too bad anyways, though. Um, but yeah, them adding bleed is just annoying. The black constructs add poison anyway, though, so it's not like it'd be too, bu too bit different, because we're not killing them that fast. Um, but I do have Thunderclap, I do have Shield Bounce, and yeah, that's a 1200 damage. Mm, yeah, okay, they're all dead. Uh, I opt to let Yogur go just so I could heal up with some meat on Magnus, and he's healed up pretty far. Uh, things are looking pretty good, I'm really happy. I see more Enrages, and Enrages are great. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is going real well. Uh, another Grinding Wheel on Magnus, I do feel like it's a bit too much. I wanted to be dealing damage. Um, I see the White Statue, and then I'm like... Where's my key option? Right, that's why you have to go fight the black constructs because you have the the key that opens the the black lock. You can't go you can't go up. You can't just randomly pick whatever fight you want. You you need to go to where you have the key. I am a complete moron. This feels man, this this destroyed me right here. I <laughs> I definitely tilted. I was like, "Well, you know what? I'm going to pick this lock anyways. It's just going to get really lucky." Yeah, I am I'm stunned right here. I'm like, nah, I'm going to pick it. It's going to be fine. Oh, critical failure. Get Electroshock put into my deck. I'm like, well, now that I have Electroshock in my deck, I need to remove it. And like, bam. Okay, I had to go north. So, oh, I have a remove card option. Oh, they freeze. <laughs> they add freeze to all my monsters, or to all monsters that start round two. And I know I'm a kind of a slow grindy team, so I'm going to be going to round two. Well, I got, I got to take the remove cards now. Otherwise, I've just given up so much. So, yeah. Uh, I kind of tilted off the face of the earth here. <laughs> um, it was... It was not good. At this point, I probably should have just left and had, like, some food, but I am kind of a stubborn player, and I decided to keep playing anyways. Um, not, not a good call. As soon as I, like, tilted, I should have just, like, given myself a little bit of a breather and had food so I could play better. But yeah, I, I tilt into giving my guys all curses and then taking a really hard modifier that I'm not sure my team is going to be able to beat um, unless I get some fairly good draws because the stuns on everybody can be particularly brutal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that, that really hurt. <laughs> um, it hurts seeing it all over again too. You know, sometimes you just... <laughs> You do dumb things. I did a dumb thing, I think, on the last video I put up as well. It was just... <laughs> I was so determined not to make, like, another dumb mistake like I did. Um, and anyways, I, I know I ended up losing this fight at least once. I think I cut that loss out of the video. Uh, but we'll see here if I actually did or not. Um, I did end up killing the sharp, or the sharp gunman who takes away all my sharp, so... I'm hoping that's enough, although he did, already took away all my sharp on Magnus, it looks like. I have a bunch of bleed on him, and not on the others, so I'm assuming that's what he did. Uh, then there's the, the guy in back who's going to be summoning imps, doing a ton of fire damage, and summoning like really explosive imps that do even more damage. So I have to be uh, 
fairly wary of him. <clears throat> ah, yeah. Yeah, the tilt was strong. <laughs> um, and, oh yeah, here we go. I did leave it in. Good, good. Yeah. Oh, my entire team dies. I'm like, right, right. I gotta do this smart. Maybe if I kill the guy in back first, I can win. But again, I can't target too well. And then I, right, I realize, wait, I have Bouncing Shield. If I can keep Bouncing Shield on top of my deck, not play War Paint here, get enough Powerful, get enough block on this turn, I can probably kill the guy in back. It's a, it's a target. And if I can kill the guy in back, then we won't take the mass amount of fire damage that kills us all, and we should be good. That's, that's the plan, anyways. Um, the tilt is wearing off a little bit. <laughs> But man, it, it still hurts. I'm sure it hurts to even watch. <laughs> uh, Alright. Uh, Titanfall is also, like, <laughs> here's also where the Lava Axe is really bad. I'm fighting these really tough fire enemies. He's not the only fire boss you can fight up here either. And some of the other angels, like, I think a lot of the light constructs have high fire resist. And so does the second to final boss. Like, it's such a bad idea to go Lava Axe when I'm not really, like, synergizing with it more than I would be with Blunt. I don't know. Oh, so dumb. Um, but here's my follow-up attack. Uh, here is a Bouncing Shield. I actually end up having Whirlwind here instead, which I could have done the... Uh, I think it would have been better to do Bouncing Shield with Thunderclap. Oh, maybe I didn't have Thunderclap. Um, in any case, I think Magnus is going to die here. Uh, I don't think I made too much of a mistake there. I just didn't get Thunderclap, that's all. Uh, Whirlwind did at least a good amount, and we killed the guy in front. We killed the... Archer there. We have Bree who's stunned, which is pretty bad. Um, but if we can kill this guy in front before he freezes someone, that'd be great. Nope, he freezes Heiner, and instead of everybody freezing Heiner, they actually all freeze a different character. And Magnus dies to thorns of all things. <laughs> so. And Yoga dies here too. Oh, uh, no, and Bree dies here. Okay, so I have to do this one more time. Okay, I think. This is going to be where I realize all my mistakes and figure out how to actually fight this fight. Oof, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I, I left this in here because I wanted to show just how much I had tilted. And, like, even though there was a clear path to victory in having uh, the Bouncing Shield and Thunderclap, it, if I could draw it, I just wasn't seeing the path. Um... But anyways, yeah, even if things go bad and don't go your way, yeah, you don't get that super awesome, big, wonderful chest of items that would clearly make your run way better. It's okay, you know? Sometimes you're good enough anyways, and you can pull through and, and have a great win. At least that's what I'm telling myself now. It, it feels just as good to win when you're behind, right? And didn't really make a stupid mistake. Uh, God. Uh, but yeah, at least Bree and Heiner, they are blocking really well for the entire team. Okay, I do have Thunderclap, so yeah, follow-up strike here. Um, and then into a Thunderclap, I can just go straight into Bouncing Shield. We kill the guy in back, he was the, really the main threat anyways. And we kill the uh, gun guy in back as well. So now we played it, I think, as best as we could. Magnus might still end up going down here, because it's a lot of damage he's taken. Um, if he doesn't die here, he might die at the start of the next fight. He even gets stunned, so it's not looking too good for him. These guys tend to have a lot of AoE, the Lancers, that is. So we can take away some of his vitality, which I think would take away some of his damage. Oh yeah, I actually just killed him. So, yeah. Um, Magnus is a bit of a precarious situation. I imagine even if I survive this fight, he might die at the start of the next one. Though we do get the massive heals here. And, oh, look at that. Actually, he's healing up quite a bit. Wait, yeah, Bree, never mind. Bree just saved him completely. I'm, I'm crazy. Um, I think all that bleed, though, is for, partially from the sharp that he got, but may also just partially from the rage that has been building up every round. So definitely something to keep in mind that I need a way to get rid of the bleed. Hmm. Uh, overall, though, you know, instead of everybody dying twice, uh, I actually win. Which feels pretty good. Um, I didn't give Yogur Sharp there because I was hoping you'd draw some meat to heal up Magnus, but didn't really. Uh, here's a purple tr challenging shout in case I really wanted it. Uh, I really wish that Citadel had been given to Bree. I would have taken it on her in the hopes of getting a good last stand. 
Um, Demolishing Blow, I'm debating between on Yogurt because it is a HP scaling card, uh, and I feel like that could be really good, but he just doesn't have a lot of energy, and the Vitality Gain isn't that worth it. Uh, fortunately, I do get the uh, card remove here. I'm still not really sure how I want to make Heiner's deck better, um, but I'm going to be removing uh, some of the cards I don't think are too valuable yet. I kept Throw Bolas in because it actually helped me win that last fight. Um, get rid of war paints at this point because war paints aren't really needed and all the electroshocks are gone so we're kind of stabilizing i do recall that uh, i can't take thorns because magnus would just die straight up that 18 thorns on act four like on all enemies mm, nah he'd be <laughs> his hp he'd just be gone um i also go up because i remember the library is actually a really good source of experience so if i can level up before the final fight of this floor I feel like I still have a fairly good chance of coming out on top. So, despite me being on tilt, I'm playing somewhat well, and I plan on getting food right after the Act 4 fight. Uh, not that that'll happen on this video. You won't see any of that. But yeah, I'll, I'll calm down a little bit. <laughs> uh, so good. It's, it's good to have mistakes, right? good to be a flawed human being. Um, Steel Forge putting in work right there, by the way. That guy, though, he just got rid of all of our Fortify so that none of our blocks last till the end of that turn. I was like, oh, Magnus nearly died. And we had no blocks, so Bouncing Shield does nothing. Like, mm, I, I hate <laughs> that uh, monk in back. <laughs> yeah, Purge Fortify. Yeah, I'm looking at it right there. <laughs> Uh, I play Carnage in the hopes to kill him, and I actually do, but it's not going to matter too much because I can't attack more with Magnus, and Bouncing Shield is kind of pointless. Well, I can't attack more, I'll just die. So, I think I'm just letting Magnus go here. Uh, at this point, I want to kill the guy in front because he's going to be doing the most damage, um, but I can't decide on whose ores are more worth stealing. I feel like I should just kill the guy in front. That would have been better. Uh, there's no guarantee on what Carnage is going to hit, though. As you can see, though, Yogurt is hitting quite often, and I was able to kill the guy in front anyway, so kind of played it right. Um, the Lancer in back did do damage through block, though, so Magnus ends up going down. Uh, this is a good chance for Heiner to heal up, though. We have a little bit of bleed. Um, might as well heal up while I can. Uh, they're healing up while attacking us as well, but it's not that bad. And the rest of our team is full health pretty much, outside of Magnus dying, so... I figure that should be good enough for the final run. We'll be able to remove it somewhat soon. And there's a purple last stand on Bree. I'm not going to get rid of it this time like I did that other time where I just misclicked. Um, and I forget what I had to do to get the uh, request done, but I was like, right, I have to take the Ancient Book of Technology. So at least I'm honorable and I get the 200 experience, um, which makes me certain to level up this next fight. I take the remove one card because Magnus had died, and I'm pretty sure I can handle a mushroom on top of random heroes or on a random hero's deck every turn. Uh, that doesn't seem like too bad of a debuff at this point. Um, the storm guy in front is very scary. Uh, he gives everybody this extra shock damage, I believe, so we want to kill him as fast as possible. Um, but you can see these carnages without powerful, without sharp, uh, they do almost nothing. It's it's so comically bad without any of the buffs that you can give him. <laughs> Um, despite Carnage being an excellent card, and I think they also up the rarity of it now, so you won't be able to have that in Act 2 as a strong buff for these warrior characters. Uh, which, you know, is probably fine. I mean, warriors were already the most powerful, so I don't feel really bad about that. Uh, Yogurt's putting in really good damage right now, though. He, like, he got just enough buff. Seven sharp? He's like, yeah, that's enough for me. I have the extra damage from this 300 HP and all the powerful, so... He's getting up to 10 powerful every turn. We don't really have to worry about that. Um, and then Bree is able to heal up everybody. Give Sharp to Magnus. And yeah. At this point the fight is pretty much over. We have Bouncing Shield too. So Bouncing Shield is definitely the MVP card of this entire run. Though Carnage is probably a close second. <laughs> Going for the grinding wheel. Just making sure I have enough energy. I miss count by one. Uh, it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah. We're going to be able to heal up Magnus even more with the meat. And yeah, you see, even the shield charge just does so much damage. 
Look at that, double Titanfall for both the brothers, but instead I go for one Titanfall on Yoger, and I go for more Enrages on Magnus, because, you know, he's pretty enraged at this point for going the wrong direction. Bladestorm, I should just get rid of here. I do, it's great. Um, I don't feel like I need Barricade anymore on uh, Bree, at least. Uh, having it on Heiner is fine. I did get that level up. Um, Heiner's getting shield when he blocks isn't that good it was so much better when he got blocked when he blocked i mean of course that was really good but it was honestly kind of insane but i don't know i liked it i liked him being the ultimate tank i don't know what was wrong with it <laughs> fine i guess um gluttony is uh when you play food gain one energy and two vitality so finally yogurt will have uh less energy issues but we don't play foods that often um the ones that we do play will make it a lot better for us if I could find a meat bag where I get a food every turn, that would be ideal. So I can make use of that. Uh, Bree just gets tireless because the other thing is pointless. I get Weapon Expert, which gives plus 7 damage to all damage done by Magnus. So it makes his carnages way, way better. Um, and I plan to get rid of Whirlwind before the final fight. So really I'm looking at Carnage being the uh, game ender for me here. Uh, these Guardian statues are really scary though. Uh, they can rack up damage in a hurry. If you slow the front one um, so that it goes slower than the uh, back one at the first turn, they actually don't do nearly as much damage because the front one blocks a lot and then the back one does a lot of damage based off the amount of block that they have. So it's a really good idea to offset them like that if you can. Um, if, you're, if you've ever been struggling with these bosses, uh, definitely go for that. Um, I also do Decadence on the uh, guy up front, but their heal that they get from their aura is going to not care about Decadence anyways, so kind of a silly play, honestly. Um, I, I didn't need Mortal Strikes in my deck at this point. I probably should have gotten rid of those a while ago, too. Still, it's not going to be the end of the world just having them. Uh, and right here, I feel like maybe the best strategy is going for the guy in front and hopefully killing him before the next round. I do have a lot of damage on the Bouncing Shield. I sadly don't have Thunderclap, uh, which really could have made it so I killed him straight up. Um, but otherwise, it's still really good damage. He's only at 775 HP, five, down to 591. I'm like, oh yeah, Yogurt, he can probably kill him, but Magnus might die. Um, I don't know if Magnus dying is really worth it, but I'm kind of struggling with the fight, so I'm hoping it is. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, now he's going to attach that aura to where everybody heals, and he's going to kill Magnus anyways. So I'm going to need to restart the fight. Oh, uh, man. Hilariously, I'm like, oh, I can get him down low enough to where he'll die, like, and he'll just guarantee die, right? And then I just... I, I, I think I play really dumb, and I don't let him die. <laughs> I want to say that's what happens next. Like, I could have lived with Magnus going down here. Like, Yogurt does just enough. Yeah, he's going to die. If I play no more cards on Heiner, he doesn't heal up. Fight's over. I'm like, nah, Heiner has enough block. And then I misplay because I don't have enough energy to do shield charge there. So he survives, and from here I'm going to lose the fight. So yeah, we're going to skip ahead. Um, next fight. <laughs> Same fight, we're just going to do this a bit smarter. Uh, I need to save Thunderclap, I think, for um, the uh, Mega Shield Bounce. I don't know if I'm going to end up doing that this time. I hope I do. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm stacking up my Rage with Whirlwind as much as possible so I have even more damage next turn. Cause I, I didn't have Thunderclap last time, right? Yeah, and so this time I just need to focus on having as much block as possible. I could have literally made sure I had that Entrench on top of my deck, but then I didn't. <laughs> Because I, I drew it straight away. I don't know. Uh, more silly plays, but I could have had even more block here if I, I needed to. Which, obviously I should, because that'll up Magnus's damage by quite a bit. Um, the Ogre's not doing too much here, but the 215 off shield charge is quite a lot. Uh, stealing auras also ends up being really good against these guys, because you steal the reinforce, uh, so they're not as tanky against warriors. Um, you steal their fortify, so they don't retain their block. There's a lot of good stuff it does for you. And yeah, here we go, sharpening up Magnus, giving him all the powerful, he's at 10, uh, now I need to make sure they're as vulnerable as possible, they are, 
Uh, yeah, 1600. There we go. We just kill him straight away. Just thunderclap, a bouncing shield, maximum block, or just a massive amount of block. All you need. It's so, so, so good. Uh, and Magnus is putting in the hard carry right now with that bouncing shield. So, making me a very happy man. Um, something I definitely should have bought on Yoger, but... Him having the HP scaling is pretty good. Now, let me slow down a little bit. Uh, yeah, you see that fight just went so different. I now also get Citadel, which is great because I get Citadel after I get, um, what's it called? The purple last stand, which makes three of my block cards zero. Uh, and Citadel is always going to be just vanishing anyway. So you only ever play it once, and it's just such a fantastic block card. Gives you that five mitigate, tons of block, and four fortify for zero. It's a good price. Um, very happy to see it. Purple Whirlwind on Hyener is hilarious, obviously not taking it. Gold Devastate, I, I don't know if it's worth it, but like it does give me rage, and I'm like, hmm, you know what, more rage on Magnus, he needs it, it'll be, it'll be great. Nullifier, fantastic option here, um, and I do get the Steadfast Boots on Bree, so that I have a little bit of extra speed, and now I know that I can outspeed the final boss, and I find the butcher block where I get the meat every turn on Yogur, which will unfortunately make it so I don't give powerful to everybody every turn, but I'm hoping Bree has enough to do that anyways, so that just means I have to figure out who gets Nullifier, it has to be Heiner because uh, Magnus has the Golden Laurel, so yeah. Uh, Magnus, uh, <laughs> I'm like, hmm, Berserker Claws, should I get even more rage? I don't know, that bleed is a little bit scary right now. And I do like the extra vulnerable charges, which is relevant with Nullifier now. But uh, yeah, I go for the extra rage. See how that works out. <laughs> um, it does give him a lot more damage. Ooh, purple Titanfall or an exotic equipment shop. I only have 14 or 1100 gold, so I'm like, maybe I'd go for the purple Titanfall. But it wasn't on the right character, and uh, I didn't feel like I had enough gold to, be, to make this worthwhile anyway, so... I don't go into it because I'm not feeling that strong at the moment, despite the fact that I think I'm actually really strong as long as I make sure Magnus gets Thunderclap and Bouncing Shield. Uh, <laughs> I think I was really undervaluing that combo this entire run. Um, but yeah, I'm not really looking for too much more outside of getting rid of Shield Slam maybe, um, getting rid of some of the Mortal Strikes and having that be a bit better. <laughs> and I just don't play Bouncing Shield because I'm like, yeah, it's good damage, but then I'll lose out all, all my block. What, what? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't really understand what I'm doing here. Um, this is a relatively tough fight. Two Angels plus two uh, Guardian Sentries can be very scary. They heal a lot. They do a lot of damage um, in massive AoE. Like... I think the only thing that's scarier is if they're all matched together and maybe you add a monk in there so that they pierce through all your shield and get rid of all your fortify. That'd be extra bad for warriors. Um, but otherwise, yeah, these guys can scale pretty nicely if you don't take one out really quickly. Fortunately, we are able to kill the one and back immediately, so they're not too much of a threat. Killing the boss enemy is usually a really good idea if you can do it because they're the only one who reasonably scales pretty fast. Um, and Magnus at this point has scaled pretty fast himself, so look at that. He's taking them all out. He's got that Devastate. Max that up to four. We go save one energy just so he can do Carnage. And man, damage at this point is looking really good, so I definitely could have taken the challenge and we could have had enough for the shop and maybe bought another pretty decent item. Um, the 30% isn't quite enough a lot of the time. I find Grinding Wheel on Heiner, it's the right one at least, so I pick it up uh, so I can maybe give Magnus or Yogur a bit more uh, sharp. I pick up the Grinding Wheel on Bree, so I plan to upgrade it, and then I have Titan Falls on Yogur and Magnus, because having those HP scaling uh, attacks is great. Titan Falls is just the best one in the game, and yogur has got it now. Um, though arguably the block attacks are better. Uh, here's my last chance to get rid of cards, so it's going to take me a bit. I've been getting rid of Intercept slowly. I figure I'll get rid of them more now. Um, I keep Steel Skin because it's one of my best block cards on Heiner. <coughs> I can literally get them up past like 400 block, like easy. Um, all by itself. I have Double Titanfall on Yogur, so at this point I'm like, I don't need more. Uh, I've got Mortal Strikes. Um, and Shield Slam, it's 
been nice. I'm like, maybe I need that four slow for the clone. Like, my thought here is Bree can make Magnus fast enough to go faster than the clone, but then Magnus has to slow the clone and the other guy down fast f enough so that um, Yogur can go and hopefully finish off the clone if Magnus can't. So I end up keeping Shield Slam in. Uh, I, I don't think I needed to. It's very silly. Um, I'm going to go for the maximum HP here on everybody, just so everybody's a little bit more survivable. And uh, we get those Titanfalls dealing more damage. I do get the discount here, which is great, so I can upgrade that grinding wheel. I could even upgrade more push forwards in case I need the extra speed. Right here, I'm doing some calculations on Breeze speed. Um, I can change the Titanfall so that it doesn't always show up first thing. Uh, and Bouncing Shield, I want to keep at maximum damage, so I'm going to keep that in. Blood Rage, I could make do less damage, but push forward, I think, is going to be the way to go so that I have enough speed for the uh, final fight. Um, shield Charge, I want to make sure it's a little bit cheaper because I haven't liked how expensive it is, even despite doing decent damage for that increase in price. Um, but I want to cheapen Carnages because uh, here's where you really want your game plan to come into action. I should have gotten rid of that Bladestorm in Magnus's deck. I don't know what that's still doing there. <laughs> that's silly. I could have gotten rid of... I think I just, like, literally glazed my eyes over it every time. Um, Yogur getting Citadel is not good, and the quantity quantity and quality rewards of cards uh, varies in how good a quality those are. So, I didn't really see the need in taking that. Probably going to get good quality anyway, just by getting excellent on this fight. And, yeah. I don't expect too much difficulty, especially without any modifier on this fight. Um, there's that shield slam coming in again. Hasn't really affected me too much because I've had enough draw, but definitely, definitely a mistake to keep in the deck. Uh, we are playing Carnages multiple times a turn at this point, so that's going really well, uh, and Yogur can do the same thing. Um, again, nothing to pillage, but we do want the cheap cheapening of Carnage. And we get the extra energy from uh, playing food, so we get that premium energy. He's got 10 powerful. And that 393 potential health, not that he gets to keep all of it right now. So we killed two of the enemies straight away, meaning that we're definitely not going to take enough damage to go down here. I'll just need to block for Magnus, make sure he doesn't take anything more than necessary. Uh, this guy does do damage through block, but that doesn't really matter because we have some heals with three uh, with the uh, Command and Conquer. And there's the uh, vulnerable going up. You can get we can stack it up to 13, which is so so good. Uh, means we're doing actually really good damage to all these guys instead of them being just resistant to us. Um, second wind on Heiner here is very very good. Uh, I do really like that. Warwind is just past its time of being useful. It's really only useful maybe in fighting all the clones of the fight, but I don't really feel like I need that. Titanfall, I, I'm like trying to debate if I need another Titanfall in Magnus's deck. Um, I'm like, yeah, sure, why not? Looks like fun. I get a Bouncing Shield and Breeze deck, which is great. And uh, here, Heiner gets to respond. So, you know, Heiner deserves it. He's doing great on this run. Uh, here's going on to the final boss. I don't cut anything out of this fight either, I think. Not really a lot of cuts on the fights uh, here. I don't think I cut a single... Like, loss or defeat out. <laughs> Looking back, I kind of kept them all in. You know, it's good to show off your mistakes. <laughs> At least I think so. I don't want to pretend like I'm a better player than I am. <clears throat> but yeah. Um, my strategy here is to kill him on like turn three or four. I plan on letting all the clones go and then killing all the clones. So, yes, I plan on letting my pets die. Uh, I maybe could have made Dex strong enough to where I could kill him first turn, um, but I wasn't really seeing how because I was just going more grindy route anyways, so it's not the end of the world to lose all your pets, though it does suck. And yeah, uh, from here on out you just want to focus on all the clones. Fortunately we do all go faster, um, and then Magnus will slow all the clones down by a bit, so we just need to kill I think the two that are at 25 speed, so that Yogur can go first. Oh no, Yogur does go first anyway, cause that's right, you slow him down by two. Yeah, that that wolf did its job at the very end here. Made sure everything was slow. Uh, and Bouncing Shield is also doing its job. 
<laughs> Making sure I just kill a clone immediately. Um, we also get a free Titanfall here. I debate on whether I should go after the uh, main boss or not. I don't, because I don't need it. And then I have extra energy, so might as well go for either Grinding Wheel or Devastate. Go for Grinding Wheel, make the Ogre's turn a little bit more impactful. My goal is to kill all the clones before they get to heal up. And yeah, Titanfall on Yogur at 529 health. That's doing quite a bit of damage. So I'm happy we got so many Titanfalls on Yogur. Like, I felt like um, I really got the cards I needed to make this build shine in the way that I wanted it to. Um, with the Carnages, the Titanfalls, the Bouncing Shields, all of that uh, worked out really nicely. So, definitely not disappointed with this run whatsoever outside of my incredibly stupid mistake. And the fact that I have to let pets die, but you know, you can't always save them. In fact, I didn't even know it was possible to save them on Madness 16 until I started doing the solo class challenge runs. Uh, which now is sandbox mode. We'll see if I do even more difficult runs than uh, previously. I definitely think that like all the sandbox options turned to max would be just literally impossible in terms of difficulty. Um, although, yeah, look at that massive Titanfall damage. I could have killed him so easily with just 2,000 damage off Titanfall. So great. Like, this is what it's meant to be. I'm so happy I have that this much vitality. And, like, I tried making other Yogurt builds where, like, I gave him vitality with the Frog and Wulaka because I'm like, they're really good at giving vitality. But, like, he's kind of just good enough at giving himself vitality with meat. So he, he feeds himself and you don't have to worry about it. That's sort of what I found. Um, it's almost a trap to give him vitality with the other guys. Though I guess you could scale it up even faster. Uh, still, there's no guaranteeing Titan Falls, so you might never even find one and be kind of sad. <laughs> uh, which is why I went for the Carnage strategy as a more guaranteed just in case. Um, and here we have the robs, and those will be useful potentially later if this guy gets too many auras, which I think he only really gets evasion and uh, this fast charge up. I was like hoping to slow the clone by enough, and I realized that Bree didn't draw a single one of her, uh, her push forwards or her um, last stand to get push forward or her uh, block to draw her like a uh, super skill card to draw more cards off of her skills. Bree probably got like the worst opening hand she could have possibly gotten, including not draw drawing throw Bolas so that the I could make the boss slower on this next turn. It just Bree opened the worst draw possible and that that could really affect your final fight here, which it made this a lot more difficult. Um and it's going to take a little bit extra to even kill this clone. Though fortunately we have enough slow to take him down. And here we get the extra draw, we get the extra push forward. So now we're going to all be going faster. And we can he at least heal up Magnus a bit. Who is taking quite a bit from bleed at this point. And I'm realizing that my enrage might be a little bit too much. Uh, though I do get to take out the clone. And he does his job with the bouncing shield. But look at that. I'm uh, bleeding to death at the start of next turn, and I'm trying to feed him some meat, see if I can save him, but I can't really do that with spoiled meat, because that'll increase his bleed charges as well. <laughs> so, at this point, I'm kind of just going to have to let Magnus go. <laughs> there's uh, there's no chance I'm saving him, sadly. Like, there's probably another path I could have gone and where I do save Magnus, but he's, he's out of here. <laughs> The boss even dealing damage through block, of course, hurts too, so. I'm hoping Yogurt's enough to take down this extra 7,700 HP the boss has. Again, you want to kill him kind of turn 5. Around 5. So. Uh, Heiner will be doing some damage with the Titanfall. That, that was some. <laughs> um, that wasn't a lot, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm putting the Bouncing Shield back on top so I can do more damage with that. These Titanfalls, they're doing 600, that's pretty good. Uh, Carnages are also doing like 600, so being able to play a ton of those each turn is great. This is the last turn that I'll be able to do a ton of damage to him, so I'm hoping to finish him off relatively quickly with enough block from Bree and Heiner. It's looking possible, but 
I'm really not having the DPS I, I want to, and with Magnus, I definitely could have killed him by now. So. <laughs> I'm deciding to keep playing through it anyways, even though I know I could reload, probably save Magnus's life and have him do an extra turn or two of damage. Uh, but, you know. If Yogur can get it done, why not let the man shine? Um, I also, I hate that the boss gets rid of all your vitality. It's just... Like, I guess you don't want the vitality build to be, like, too good here for some reason? I don't know. Like, it feels a little bit funny considering that sharp is a thing and other guys who scale off sharp just do more damage. I don't know. But, in any case, uh, Yogur actually does have the damage to kill him by himself. I just need to make sure I last one more turn. And unfortunately, I'm killing him round 9, not round 5. So uh, that means he's going to do quite a bit of damage with that Sanctify transforming to Dark. Bree just pops instantly, but Heiner and Yogur get to live. So yeah, best score ever even, even though I had three heroes die. Not too bad. Um, so yeah, thank you all for watching. Uh, here I'm just showing what I did. I tried that, like I said, I tried this run once before. Uh, kind of threw it because I didn't want to win without Rob. And yeah, here's my decks. Here's Yogur's deck. Um, and here's the damage comparison, so yeah, all those <laughs> trying to figure out who did the most there, it was actually, uh, Magnus. Yogur fed him enough meat, though Yogur wasn't too far behind. Um, uh, Magnus did take the most damage, I think a lot of that was self-inflicted with bleed towards the end there. Um, uh, not really sure what else would be doing it. Bree and Heiner did their job blocking and healing, so... Yeah, thanks everybody for watching, uh, that is all I have to show. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video, and again, if you could just leave a thumbs up, that would be very helpful. Thank you very much, and goodbye.